week ago at Stanford, it was truly one of the amazing comebacks in college football history. The Cougars with a 49-42 win against the Stanford Cardinal. Here's how they did it. Down 42-14 to in the third quarter. Reuben Mays, a 39-yard touchdown run from scrimmage, and it was 42-21 to Stanford. In the fourth quarter, quarterback Mark Rippon rolls to his left, gets inside the end zone, and it's 42-27. to The extra point kick by John Trout was blocked. But then the Cougars get the football right back on the ensuing kickoff. The short kick by John Trout. It bounces away. Kevin Scott fumbles the football. It's going to be recovered by Kevin Thomason all the way down to the Stanford five-yard line at Washington State. Right back with the football. The celebration by Kevin Thomason and everybody on the Cougars' sideline. Washington State back with the football. On the very next play, Reuben Mays, a five-yard touchdown run, taking the pitch out from Mark Rippon, the left side dives into the end zone. The two-point conversion try was good. It was 42-35 Stanford. And then Rippon, 5-35 to go in the ball game. The little screen pass. Ruben Mays. And Mays goes 53 yards all the way. And the ball game is tied at 42-42. The ball game is a long way from being over as Washington State gets the football right back. Quarterback Fred Buckley, the senior quarterback for the Stanford Cardinal, a lot of pressure. Dropping back to throw scrambles the pass is off intercepted by Ron Collins his second of three interceptions on the day and he's run out of bounds at the Stanford 16 yard line and then the winning score 306 left to go in the contest and Reuben Mays his fifth and final touchdown of the day a 22 yard run and the Cougars win it 49 to 42 and this afternoon it's the Cougars of Washington State against the Oregon Ducks here on the Super Channel From Watson Stadium here in Eugene, Oregon, it's the Cougars of Washington State against the Oregon Ducks. The Cougars 1-2 and two in the Pac-10. The Ducks with a record conference mark of 1-3 and three here on the Super Channel. Hello again, everybody. Rick Riz along with Paul Johns of the Seattle Seahawks. And Paul, the Cougars against the Oregon Ducks this afternoon. A little on the cloudy side, but quite a ball game last week. That 49-42 win against the Stanford Cardinal. Yes, it was an amazing comeback in the fact that the Cougars were down by 28 points with five minutes left in the third quarter. They were able to score 35 points in 20 minutes, but that's not the only case. The Cougar defense was able to stop the Cardinal offense from scoring any points while the, while the Cougar offense was able to make up that deficit. Talking about defense, the Oregon Ducks did a great job last week against number one ranked Washington. They held the Huskies to only three first downs, but lost that ball game 17 to 10. Yes, the, the secondary for Stanford did a very good job because they're going against a very good Husky offense. I look for I look for the Cougar the Cougar offense to run the beer again, but I look for the Oregon defense to try to play the same type of defense that the Stanford defense did by playing zone. Because in order in order to uh, defense the, the uh, beer very good, you have to play zone so everybody can look for it. Here are some of the key players to watch this afternoon for the Cougars and the Oregon Ducks. First of all, quarterback Mark Rippon of the Washington State Cougars. Doing a great job in throwing the football and sophomore quarterback Chris Miller. Miller completing over 50% of his passes for over 1,000 yards and Mark Rippon doing a good job. Yes, Mark Rippon is number one in the Pac-10 in total offense. 188 yards of that being in the pass. He needs only 285 yards in passing to move into the top 10 spot in all-time uh, passing for a uh, Cougar quarterback. So he's doing a very good job. And two more of the exciting ball players will be Lou Barnes of the Oregon Ducks and also running back Ruben Mays. Mays, the great Great afternoon last week, over 200 yards, and Lou Barnes can catch a football. Yes, Lou Barnes is uh, 5'10", 164 pounds. He's an electrifying receiver. In fact, he can go deep for the ball, he can catch it. Plus, he's also a very good punt return man. The Cougars against the Ducks, and we'll be back for the opening kickoff this afternoon right after these messages. Thank you. 
Okay, Mike. Back once again, everybody. Rick Riz along with Paul Johns. Washington State against the Oregon Ducks. It is cloudy. We had some rain earlier today. It rained quite a bit yesterday, but we've got an exciting football game coming your way here on the Super Channel. The Cougars coming up with a victory last week in quite a ball game. Paul Johns, we talked about it on the uh, pregame show, that 49-42 excellent come from behind win against the Stanford Cardinal, their first of the Pac-10 season in 1984. They are 1-2 in the conference, 3-4 and four overall. Oregon getting ready to kick off to the Washington State Cougars, and we are underway. The deep men are Rick Chase into the end zone, and Chase will let it bounce. It'll stay in the end zone, and the Cougars have it, and we are underway here at Watson Stadium. The Ducks with a record of 1-3 on the season in the Pac-10. They started off very well this year with a 4-0 record, winning their first four games but losing their last three. And last week they played quite a ball game against the number one ranked Washington Huskies but losing 17 to 10. Jamie White, Dan Lynch, Kurt Ladinas, Kirk Samuelson, and Mike Dreyer, the offensive line for Washington State, first and 10 at their own 20. Marshall James and Olsen are the receiving core. Tight end Jamie Martin. Olsen making a start. Rippin Mays and Calvin in the backfield. On the first play from scrimmage, it's Mays right over the middle. And Rubin, who had that great game last week against the Stanford title, punches out about four yards, and we're underway. David Kulp on the tackle for the Ducks. Pretty good crowd this afternoon here at Autzen Stadium. It's homecoming for Oregon. Dale Dorning, Roland Kutzier, David Copeland, John Byrne along the defensive front line. The linebacking core, Don Pelham, Bob Huditz, and Todd Welch. On second down, and second down and six. Griffin scrambles away. Rolling to his right, keeps the football. The 25 to the far sideline, and he's out of bounds at the Cougar 33-yard line, and he's got himself a first down. That was one good job by Rippin then. He avoided the rush. As I said, the, the Ducks would play the zone defense. That's just what they played. Rippin was a, didn't find a man open, was able to avoid the rush and pick up a first down. Good job. Mark Rippin had a fine season for Washington State, throwing for well over 1,000 yards, completing over 50% of his passes. He is the number one total offense leader in the Pac-10 with over 200 yards, and he's throwing for an average of 188 yards a game. It's first and 10 for the Cougars. On first down, Ruben Mays again, and he spins away for a couple of yards. Again on the tackle is David Culp. For Oregon. That's a great job defensively. Last week against the Huskies, as you take a look at Ruben Mays, who had the five touchdown runs against the Stanford Cardinal. Rick Chase and Sam Burst now checking in the ball game and coming out is John Marshall for Washington State. It is second down and five for the Cougars at their own 38 yard line. Rick Riz along with Paul Johns from Watson Stadium. Glad you could join us for all the play by play today. In motion to the near side is Sam Burris. On second down, Rippon puts it up. The outlet pass to Chase. The 40, 45, has the first down, 50. And he's down to Duck territory at the Oregon 46 or 45 yard line. And the tackle is Dan Wolf in the free safety. Nice little catch and nice run up field by Rick Chase. Yes, it was. This is the same play that, that the Cougars used last week against Stanford. A quick screen and a lot Chase, who's a very good man to find the open seam to get the ball and do a good job. This play was very effective last week, and so far the first time it's been run today, it's very effective. So it's another first and ten for the Cougars at the Oregon 46-yard line. The Cougars have not moved the football at all in the first half this year. They are doing so this afternoon up the middle of the 40-yard line. Again, Ruben Mays. He was a workhorse last week, wasn't he? 29 carries, 216 yards, and five touchdowns, and you can't do much better than that. No, you cannot, but you expect your good running backs to be a workhorse. He has to be in shape because you know he's going to get the ball, and he has to accept the responsibility. Cougars moving the football all the way down to the Oregon 41-yard line. It is second down and four. A six-yard carry by Ruben Mays. In motion and behind the quarterback, Griffin is Sandburst heading out to the far side. And a handoff over the middle goes Calvin. And Calvin gets maybe a couple of yards and then is pulled back by David Culp. And Culp already has at least four tackles along with Todd Welch, the right linebacker. They use a four-man defensive front, the Oregon Ducks. They limited the Washington Huskies one week ago to only three first downs. That's incredible. 
that's doing a very good job. And like I said, they were going against a very good Washington offense. Even though Washington's sputtering, they still are a good offense. They're down and two for Washington State. Down to the duck, 30, close to the 37-yard line. Michael James into the ball game in motion. Rippin, handoff over the middle, Mays and Rubin. Looks like he's got the first down. Plenty of yardage for the first down, all the way down to the duck, 33-yard line. Dom Pelham, the left linebacker, and Dan Wolf in the free safety to get on the stop, and it's another first down for Washington State. Very rarely will you find the first tackle getting Mays down. He's just so strong, he's able to break that first tackle. Now here's what the Cougars have done by quarters. Only seven points in the first quarter all season long. And look at that, 87 points in the fourth quarter for their 185 points. It's first and ten for the Cougars. Their third first down on their first drive of the day. The pitch out goes to Mays, and he gets close to the duck. 31-yard line, and that's about it. Bob Hewitt's the middle linebacker who leads the ball for the 77 tackles. Now make it 78 on the stop for Oregon. They're going to keep their eyes on that quick pitch, aren't they? We had a chance to talk with head coach Rich Brooks yesterday afternoon after practice. Yes, they're, they're definitely going to stop that quick pitch. That's a key play for Washington State. And in order to stop their offense, you have to stop the quick pitch and also the counter dive. Second down and eight for the Cougars. Sun breaking through here at Oxen Stadium. It was very cloudy earlier today. Griffin, again the pass to Chase to the near side, the 20. And he's all the way down to the duck 14-yard line where it's going to be another first down for the Cougars. Rick Chase already a second catch of the ball game. That was another quick screen, but, but that was a devastating block by Jamie White, the offensive tackle who led that quick screen. Rick Chase just followed that big wall and picked up a lot of yards. Here you see Jamie White, that beautiful block on the cornerback. And Hobart, a good job to spin away. Off a block, and then he is credited with the tackle. But a good job again by Rick Chase, his second catch of the day. He had five catches last week, and that 49-42 went against Stanford. First and ten for the Cougars down to the duck. 13-yard line. Motion is Breeland into the ball game. Griffin rolling to his right, has pace, pitches it out to room in the ten. The five, cuts away all the way down to the duck. Four-yard line, tackled by Doug Judge, the strong safety for the Ducks. So the Cougars right away moving the ball against the Oregon defense. This is a very, very effective drive. They're able to do what they want to do. They run the ball when they want to and pass when they want to. So far, it's, they're just doing everything they want to do. Head coach, Rich Brooks. On the Oregon sideline, been in coaching some 26 years in the collegiate and the professional ranks, professionally with the Los Angeles Rams and the San Francisco 49ers. It is second down and one for the Cougars at the Duck four-yard line. James and Chase wide to the left side, but over the middle goes Calvin and Calvin, Richard Calvin down to the Duck one-yard line. Richard Calvin on the carry. Seems a little disappointed. He felt he was scored on that play. He did one good job of trying to get in there, but it was a little bit, I think it was too many men for him to carry out that weight. Look how close. Nose of the football, very close to the goal line. It is first and goal for the Cougars, only six inches away. And we have nine and a half minutes to go here in the first quarter. The Cougars ready to score. And Ripley takes himself. Touchdown, Washington State. No doubt about it. What a drive by the Cougars. And Washington State leads six to nothing as they drive all the way downfield. 9.24 to go here in the first quarter, Paul. Yes, and if you, if you think about it, they broke that string of not being wow. able to score in the first quarter. As we see it again, Ripley just quarterback sneak, goes over the left side, follows some good blocking, and he's tall, and he can just fall into the end zone. Great try by Washington State, the one-yard run by quarterback Mark Rippon. And it's 6-0. Washington State as John Trout comes out for the extra point. Staff from center, and the kick is up, and it is perfect. Right through the uprights, and it's now the Cougars 7, and Oregon nothing with 9.24 to go here in the first quarter of play. Thank you. 
Zie je. And very quickly, the Cougars up on the board here in the first quarter. They lead the Oregon Ducks by a score of 70, 7 to nothing. An 80-yard touchdown drive capped by that short one-yard run by quarterback Mark Rippon. And just like that, the Cougars with a quick seven points. The deep man for Oregon is number eight, Tony Newman. He's averaging 20 yards a return, along with Tony Cherry, number 28. That is the Oregon goal line. It is homecoming for the Oregon Duck fans here at Watson Stadium. Got a good crowd on hand, despite the cool temperatures and the rain we had yesterday. Yes, it's good to see the sun coming out. You better believe it. John Trout ready to kick it away for Washington State. He played a big role in last week's 49-42 win against Stanford. That big kick that was fumbled by Kevin Scott. And over end. Short kick taken at the 8-yard line by Newman. Newman the 20-25 across the 40. Sheds a couple of blockers or tacklers and he's all the way down to the Duck 40-yard line. So an excellent return by Anthony Newman. Took it at his own 8-yard line all the way out to the Oregon 40. Good job. Yes, it was a good job. But what, what the key to that is the ball, it was a short kick. That doesn't allow your defensive people to get down and cover the ball well. He, break, he has one missed tackle. He follows his blockers up and has a very good run down the sideline. Newman only a freshman. 6'1", 185. So the Ducks with the football. Led by sophomore quarterback Chris Miller. Miller knocked out of the ball game last week against the Washington Huskies in the second quarter. And the handoff goes to Alex Mack, the fullback. And Mack across the 40 gains about close to five yards. Rico Tipton on um, the tackle for Washington State. Mack, 48 carries coming into the ball game, 196 yards for an average of 4.1 yards a carry and two touchdowns this year. The other running back, tailback Kevin McCall. Second down and 10. Gain of eight yards on the carry. Out of the eye formation. Wide to the right is Barnes and Holman. And the handoff goes to the tail tap. McCall. And McCall gets across the 45 all the way down to the Duck 47-yard line. Tackled by Lee Blakey. Kevin McCall. Averaging 3.5 carries a ball game this year. 351 yards on the season and three touchdowns. They don't run the football all that much. I think they're averaging about 124 yards on the ground, Paul. Yeah, I think they want to try to establish a run game because Washington State knows they're going to pass, so why not try to run? Split backs. It is third down and three. Oregon with the football at their own 47. And the handoff back, and he is tackled right as he took the exchange from Chris Miller. In the backfield, Brad Harrington is there as they peel off the pile. But the first man to get him was Milford Hodge to make the stop. A loss on the play. Back to the 45, and a great job by the Cougar defense and Milford Hodge. Milford had a good game last week, so it seems like he's just picking up where he left off. No one touched him. He came through the gap between the center and guard and makes a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. And Mike Preacher will come on to punt it away for the Ducks at his own 32-yard line. And the kick is off. And this one will sail into the end zone. The deep man was... Back up quarterback Ed Blunt. And the Cougars will have it first and ten at their own 20-yard line. Washington State right back to the football, leading Oregon by a score of 7 to nothing here at Watson Stadium with 7.27 to go here in the first quarter. Mike Preacher on the far sideline. That's the sunshine sideline here at Watson Stadium. We're directly under the bleachers across the way. Cougars again go right back against the Oregon defense. That was one heck of a kick. That ball seemed to shoot off his foot. Good butt by Mike Preacher. On first down, Rippin. The handoff goes to Calvin. Calvin over the left side of the line, and he picks up a couple of yards. Tackled by John Byrne, the defensive right end for Oregon. Ducks are 4-3 and three overall on the season. Trying to snap a three-game losing streak. It is second down and eight. Mark Rippon and the Cougars at their own 23-yard line. They'll we'll make it to 22. Down it away. The pass by Rippon. Up with the hands is the defensive left end, Dale Dorning. He's 6'4", 255. His senior got up there tonight to pass a win. There was no doubt about it. Exactly. One reason why he was able to do that is because if, you, if you're going to throw a quick pass like that, 
the defensive end has to be cut or you have to have someone going to his knees so he can't jump up. But no one touched me. They would just jump up and knock the ball down. Third down and eight for the Cougars. Just across their own 22-yard line. Michael James into the ball again, along with John Marshall, split out to the near sideline. Now James starts off in motion. Mark setting up pass over the middle, and it's going to be incomplete. That one is batted away, intended for Marshall over the middle, but batted away by Dan Wilkin, the free safety. That was a good play by Dan Wilkin. The ball, he was covered, he was covered very well. You see Griffin drops back. The ball, he's covered very well. The, Dan Wilkin comes over the shoulder, and he seems like he tried to force that pass because that was, he wasn't open by any means. Tough to get it in there. And yes. Wilkin is Boy, there. Harper, Harper, Harper. Harper back to punt it. Is, no! He's to the football! Rick Chase, the 40, the 45, the 50! They go all the way! The 30, the 20, the 10! Rick Chase, touchdown, Cougars, unbelievable! The fake punt, it goes to Rick Chase, and he goes all the way, and the Cougars right away with a 13-0 lead against the Ducks. That, oh, was good, that was a very good play to call. Who's going to think that the Cougars are going to try a fake punt early in the game? Just a shark goes to the up back. He gets it. It's nothing but running room. And Rick Chase is used to do, finding his running room behind his blockers. He follows the last blocker. Wow. Cuts back. No one's going to touch him. Almost like a punt return for him. Owen oh, Chappelle makes sure that nobody touches him the last 20 yards. And Trout on for the extra point. And this is John's already second try of the ball game. The kick is up, and it is good. And just like that, with 6.39 to go in the first quarter, it's the Cougars, 14, and the Ducks, nothing. An unbelievable start here at Austin Stadium for Washington State. 14 points in the first quarter. Wow. That one goes 78 yards. A touchdown run by... Rick Chase. They have everyone food. Nobody. They're coming to block the block the punt because Washington State hasn't had a lot of success with their special teams, and their punter's been, had his punts blocked a number of times. Coach Walden probably said, if they're going to come that hard, then we're going to just have a fake punt and, and see what we can do with it. And just like that, the Cougars have a very quick start, 14 to nothing against the Ducks. It's going to make it's going to it's going to make the uh, Ducks defense play much much safer next time. They won't come rushing as hard. Again, Tony Cherry and Anthony Newman uh, to beat Ben for Oregon. Back at their own goal line. And Trout will tee it up in his own court. Rick Chase, the 78-yard touchdown run. Uh, the Cougar sideline, big smile on his face, a slap on the shoulder pad. Third quarter, Boston College, 35. He's a walk-on. <laughs> Chase had the five catches last week. He was the leading pass catcher in that win against the Stanford Cardinal. He had five for 64 yards for an average of 12 point and a catch. Marshall had four. Calvin Burris each had two in that ball game. And May Sears and Michael James each had one. The kick by Trout, then over in. Again, a little on the short side. This time is going to be taken by Cherry. The zone 12 yard line, the 20, 25, the 30, back toward midfield. The 35, the 40, the only man, John Trout, to try to stop him. And Trout can't get up the 30, the 20. Coming back is Ron Collins, and he saves the touchdown. Ron Collins on the tackle. They get a hold of Tony Cherry, but he gets all the way down to the Cougar, close to the Cougar, 18-yard line, and what a return by Tony Cherry. First of all, it comes again from having a short kick. You're allowed a runner to catch the ball on the run. The defense people don't have time to get down on the coverage. Good blocking and good running by Tony Cherry, and that's what happens usually when you have a short kick. John Trout here says, I'm in trouble. i got to try to get him, but he doesn't. Stays in bounds, and it's Ron Collins to save the touchdown, but the Ducks with the football all the way down to the 18, the pass by Miller to the near sideline, and it's incomplete intended for Luke Barnes, who was low and underthrown. They're trying to do a little quick out to get the ball in his hands to see what he can do after he catches it, but the ball was thrown too far outside and too far in front of him. 6.24 to go in the first quarter. The Cougars lead the Ducks 14-0. Quarterback Chris Miller coming back from that mild concussion suffered last week. Second down and ten. Wide to the right is Barnes. The MVP 
played for the Ducks a year ago in his first year with the ball club. Going to his right. Alex Mack. Got yeah, a pitch off game. to Alex Mack and Mack. It's a close to the, well, across the 15, all the way down to the Cougar 14-yard line, but a flag is thrown. Maybe offensive holding against Oregon. Now that's the indication from the referee. So penalty will go against the Ducks. So the Cougars hoping that might slow things down a little bit as the Ducks way down inside right now. Through the territory. Many times when you're inside the 20, your defense, is back, your defense will go to man-to-man. -man. Now they can push back, they may go back to his own. But I would look for them, maybe in man-to-man, -man, I look for Oregon to try to take advantage of that with uh, Lou Barnes. He's their main man to throw the football to. He is not, though, the leading receiver on the ball club. Kevin McCall leads the ball club with 27 receptions coming out of the backfield. It is second down and 19 after the offensive holding penalty against the Ducks and Miller. Rolling to his right. Pressure gets away from Krakowski. Cuts back toward midfield. The 25, the 20. Keeps the football and he is down at the 16-yard line. Finally taken down by linebacker Jeff Lomas. A nice bit of running by sophomore quarterback Chris Miller. Takes a little breather right there. It's a rollout. It's a rollout. And uh, instead of Washington State being in a man-to-man, -man, they're in the zone. He's looking for Barnes, and Barnes well covered, so he has to take the ball upfield. Does a very good job of scrambling. If there's any concern about Miller's health, and if he can run the football, I think they're answered very well right now. Did a good job to avoid a couple of tacklers. It is third down and eight at the Cougar 17-yard line. Dropping back, looking over the middle, passes off, and it is going to be complete down to the Cougar 10-yard line. Doug Herman, the tight end from Renton, Washington. Over the middle was open. Pass was a little low, but a nice catch by Doug Herman and the Ducks down to the Cougar 10. It is third down. They make it fourth down and one. Fourth and one for the Ducks. Gerald Waters checks out of the ballgame defensively for Washington State. Eric Elliott also into the ballgame along with Doug Herman. Two tight ends and they will go for it. The Ducks to go for it. Fourth and one. And now timeout is called by the Ducks and... What about Chris Miller wants to talk things over with head coach Rich Brooks? I'm sure he does. He may have seen something he didn't like as far as the play they had called. Washington State may have had a different defense, so instead of running a play that you might, might think it's worth, all time, that's what they're going for. You know what I mean? Hey, let's take it. 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 Let
do it all, do it again, do it, do it again. Look at everybody moving. The left guard, the left Oregon. The defense is allowed to move. The offense cannot move into the ball snap. And the man of the striped jerseys, Reese and Coyne and Highsmith, then Howard Slavin, Lee Cook, Dan Hill, and Matt Gilchrist are the judges. The line judge, the field judge, the back judge, and the side judge. I guess the judges said, no, hey, it was too close for anybody to call. Let's just do it over again. He said, well, <laughs> let's try one more time, and hopefully nobody will jump the gun. It is fourth and one, and the Ducks will try it one more time. In motion is Barnes in behind Miller. And the pitch out goes to McCall. McCall turns the corner, has the first down. The five is down and out of bounds at the Cougars three-yard line. Has it first and goal for the Ducks. Inside the five, tackled by Cedric Brown. When everybody's caught up in the inside, sometimes the best player to run is a sweep. This is just what they ran here. Pick up ample enough yardage to get the first down. Cedric Brown on the tackle, but McCall delivered a pretty good hit as he was driven out of bounds, and now it's first and goal at the Cougar three yard line. The call dies, and he's in there. Touchdown, Oregon, and the Ducks have their first score of the afternoon. A three yard run by Kevin McCall, diving over the left side in behind Wheatley and Greg Schwab. And for Kevin McCall, his fourth touchdown of the season. As you look at it, one more time. To dive play, he cuts back inside. He gets hit, but he's flipped and just crosses the goal line. It's a good run, good drive. But what started that all off was a long kick return. Matt McLeod will, Matt McLeod will come out and try for the extra point as McCall heads on over to the duck bench. So McLeod will try for the extra point. And keeping the football is Miller pass off into the end. No, it's not. Miller's still with the football, and now he has taken it down at the Cougar five-yard line. So they try a little razzle-dazzle of their own, but it doesn't work. The Cougars are right there to defend on the play and to keep right on quarterback Chris Miller, who is the holder on the extra points. I'm a little surprised that they would try to go for two early in the game, but you can't, you can't second-guess the coach. I, felt, I guess he felt that going for two was the best thing right now. There's the score. The Cougars 14 and the Ducks 6. So they gambled, and this time they came up short, and a good job defensively by Washington State. 14 to 6, so that could loom to be a big play a little bit later on, and yes. that's been the situation for the last, at least the last three, four ball games for the Cougars. In those close losses to USC, to UCLA, and then that amazing win last week at Palo Alto. Wow. Rick Chase had that 78-yard touchdown run, the deep man for the Cougars at his own goal line. That was on a fake punt by Harper, who went to Chase, and he went 78 yards for the Cougars' second score already in this ballgame. We have 429 on the clock here in the first period. Waiting for the Oregon Ducks is Dean Otto. He's a kick man. He's from South Africa. Walked down and made this ball club. Dean Otto played a lot of soccer. Of course, that's a big background for a lot of the kickers now in football. I'm sure it is. You have to use your feet to kick the ball. In soccer, they didn't know how to control the ball very well. Next week, the Cougars will take on Oregon State. You can follow all the action right here on the Super Channel. Rick waiting for the Oregon Ducks is Dean Otto. He's a kick man. He's from South Africa. Walked down and made this ball club. Dean Otto played a lot of soccer. Of course, that's a big background for a lot of the kickers now in football. I'm sure it is. You have to use your feet to kick the ball. In soccer, they didn't know how to control the ball very well. Next week, the Cougars will take on Oregon State. You can follow all the action right here on the Super Channel. Rick Riz along with Paul Johns as you take a look at head coach Rich Brooks. Arms folded. One of the two-point conversion did not get it. Rich Brooks, outstanding football player himself at Oregon State. Kick is off. Chase. 
That's a roll in and out of the end zone. Washington State back to football. As a matter of fact, getting back to Rich Brooks, he was a defensive back and also a backup quarterback at Oregon State. The young man who won the Heisman Trophy that year, quarterback Terry Baker, graduated from Oregon State in 1963. 4.29 to go in the first quarter. We have seen a lot of activity already here at Austin Stadium. Officials talking things over. What are things going on right here, Paul? Talking with middle linebacker Bob Huditz. And you know, the penalty against Washington State but it's declined. Obviously in the last pick, that was Jim Walton. You're seeing more and more illegal use of hands on kick returns because they're not allowed to block below the waist anymore. So players, to avoid that, they just push. I guess I'd rather have someone push me than to correct me and block below my waist. Michael James, wide to the near side, wide to the right is John Marshall. First and ten for the Cougars. Ruben Mays. Still on his feet and banks his way down to the Cougar 26-yard line. Dan Wilkin on the stop for the Ducks. Ruben Mays is one tough runner. Yes, he is. He makes it tough. He makes it tough on defensive backs because when he breaks through, defensive backs know this, this is a work hard coming through here and I have to throw my body out because I'm the last person that can make the tackle. 29 carries last week. Picks up six yards on that last carry. It's second down and four. From the end zone camera, Mark Rippon looking over the defense. Ruben Mays one more time as he gets close to the Cougar 30. David Cope on the stop. John Pell and David Cope on the stop. David Cope, number 72, 264, 296, a senior. <laughs> Where's the beef? Oh, goodness. That's a big guy. Is that right? 296. <laughs> Second down and 10 for the Cougars. Just across their own 28 guide line. Backs. And off goes to Calvin. Calvin near the 30, but I don't know if they got enough for the first down. The first degree is John Byrne, the defensive right end along with Hewitt's, the middle linebacker. I don't think he got it. It was a good trip penetration by defensive line. I think they stopped it. So not enough for the first down. They needed to get to the 30, but the nose of the football a few inches away. And Harper will try for a punt. Or will he? <laughs> the last time it went to Chase and he ran 78 yards. I don't think they're going to rush as hard as they did last time. There's the kick. Spiral. And it's going to be taken by Lubines at his 18-yard line. Toward the middle. Across the 20. Toward the far sideline. And he is nailed down at the duck 23-yard line. Very good coverage by Washington State. They the guys kept their lanes, didn't allow anyone to block them. Titus Jackson on the tackle downfield, good tackle. You better get down the field on this man, because he's dangerous. If he finds a hole, he can break this thing all the way, but he doesn't find the hole, and the pursuit is good. And he run, make, they make him run parallel to the line of scrimmage, wow. and you can't pick up yards when you do that. Just flatten him. Barnes averaging 9.1 yards a return. The Ducks have the football at their own 24-yard line. First and 10. 2.34 to go here in the first quarter. Cougars leading 14 to 6. The call, the tailback over the right side across the 25 down to the 27. And that is about it. Milford Hodge on the tackle. Head coach Rich Brooks. After Brooks, his eighth year here at the University of Oregon. Winning season back in 1979 when he went 6 and 5 and was named the Pac 10 Coach of the Year. And also the District 9 College Coach of the Year. Gain of three, second down and seven. Pass to the near sideline. Whoa! And incomplete intended for Blue Barnes. They, they don't seem to be able to hook up right now. That was just a five yard just a five-yard stop route, and the ball bounced to him before it got. He scooped it up on the short hop, but the low pass. Well, no. No, it wasn't. He no, just it made it. it all the way there. From our yes. angle, it looked like looked it like had it bounced. bounced. But Lou Bynes just couldn't hang on to the football, so it's third down and seven. From the eye, they go to the split backs. All in the back of the backfield. 
passing down Miller to throw. Steps up the pocket and gets creamed at the Duck 19-yard line. He stepped up in the pocket and met about two tacklers. One of them was Rob Cleveland. And the other is Eric Howard. He got hit real oh. hard. I, I guess next time he won't step up as fast, bro, because they're laying close real hard on him. The There's Howard. Fourth and 14, and the Cougars will have good field position. Eric Howard on the Cougar sideline. Mike Creature on the punt. He's going to put it away about his own nine-yard line. Ed Blunt is the deep man for Washington State. Blunt coming up to the far side. Gets it at the 47, and he is nailed there. Wow. Downfield right away. Dan Devaney to make the quick hit on Ed Blunt. That's a, that's a punt return nightmare. You don't know whether you don't know whether a fair catch or catching the run, and this time he may have been better than the fair catch. Mm. But he held onto the ball, and that's the most important thing. Good job to hang on to the football. First and ten for the Cougars. That's going to be at their own 40, close to the 48 yard line. Sam Burris and Marshall to the left side. James to the right. 14 to 6, Cougars out in front. Griffin rolling to his left. Complete to Marshall, the 45 and out of bounds at the Duck 42-yard line. Close to the first down, but inches shy of it at home, depending on the play for the Ducks. That's a very nice route against a zone defense. The outside receiver runs straight down the field to clear it out. The inside receiver runs about eight yards and just rounds it out toward the sideline. It's a rollout pass by Rippin. He finds the open man, picks up almost a first down. It may be a first down, maybe a little short. Very, very close to the first down, and it's going to be just about six inches shy. Just a few inches away from a first and ten for the Cougars, who are number one in the Pac-10, and garnering up the first downs. Number one in total offense. Mark Rippin doing a good job throwing the football for close to 200 yards, 188-yard average, over 200 yards total offense. Ruben Mays, the number one rusher in the Pac-10 with his 861 yards coming into the ball game, And Paul, he is number five in the nation in rushing the football. With, with these guys, with Griffin, number one in the Pac-10, and Mays, number one, you wonder why their record isn't better than it is. That's because the special teams haven't been doing a good job, and they take so long to score points usually in previous games. Second down, less than a yard. Takes the pitch. Pass. Open. Is Michael James and he spins all the way down to the goal line but he steps out of bounds at the Duck 4 yard line. What a catch by Michael James. Dan Wilk had not knocked him out of bounds. That was a beautiful play. You only need, a, you only need six inches to go so instead of running the ball you send Michael James down the, down wow. the line of scrimmage. He comes in motion and just keeps going. Runs past the defensive back, runs behind everyone and it's wide open. Michael James and he just was spinned around enough by Wilkin to step out of bounds at the Duck Rally. The football is just on the other side of the five-yard line. First and goal for the Cougars just inside the five. Chance to score one more time with only 58 seconds to go in the first quarter. Russell's and a timeout is called. And quarterback Mark Griffin goes over to the near sideline to tuck it over with head coach Jim Walden and the rest of the coaching staff. Likes the Cougars attack in the first quarter of play. Again, the pass from Mark Griffin. Here's the fake pitch to Ruben Mays, and that kind of opens the path for Michael James. Yes, it does. With Ruben Mays being such an effective runner, the first person you have to key and look for is Ruben Mays. So you, why not fake the ball to him and throw it to someone ran down the sideline? It was effective. That keeps everybody busy in the defensive backfield when you have Ruben Mays, who took that pitch last week and ran for five touchdowns. 14 to 6, our score here in the first quarter, winding down with 58 seconds to go. It is first and goal at the Duck five yard line. The time and the score here at Autzen Stadium on their brand new scoreboard. It's making its debut today here at homecoming afternoon. And Devaney into the ball game and linebacker for Oregon. First and goal. Calvin and Richard pulls his way down to the duck. The two or three yard line on the stop is Dan Devaney who just checked in defensively for the Ducks. 
that's this is why this as we see the as we see the trap play on the other side it's not the counter but but the defense and secondary are playing man to man now they follow the receivers all the way out of the end zone that's why you don't want to play man to man most of the time against a beer, beer offense so Michael James checked into the ball game. He splits way outside to the right. Second and goal at the three-yard line. The pitch out goes to Mays. That's a field. He's got the touchdown. Washington State and Ruben Mays the touchdown. And the Cougars with 17 seconds to go here in the first quarter are way out in front of Oregon. 20 to 6 on the three-yard touchdown run for Ruben Mays. He had five last week. It's a quick pitch. He cuts his ass a good, a beautiful block. Beautiful block by Mike Dyer to allow Ruben Mays to cut inside and there's no one there to make the tackle. Jim Walden very pleased with his forces, Ruben Mays. His first touchdown of the afternoon. Maybe more on the way, the way he runs the football. A kick by Trout. And it is good, no doubt about it. And the Cougars with 17 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Our score, Washington State 21 and the Ducks 6. One thing about the scoreboard is getting a, it's getting a good initiation. It's getting a great workout today. Sure is. Cougars with a big lead over the Oregon Ducks. We were looking for a, a defensive battle because of the game the Ducks played last week against the Washington Huskies when they limited the Huskies to only three first downs and 109 yards total offense. 70 passing, just a little over 30 on the ground. Amazing. Oh, I think it was vice versa. I'm sorry. About 70 on the ground. I guess what we didn't realize how potent the Cougars offense is. Number one. That's right. It's number one in the Pac-10. And we overlooked that fact. Some of the friends are at Austin Stadium enjoying the hot one. <laughs> I'm sure are going through a lot of hot coffee. A little on the chilly side. Deep Ben. For Oregon, Tony Cherry and Anthony Newman. Cherry did a great job. Last time on the kick as he brought it all the way down to the Cougar 18-yard line. And that's where the Ducks came on the score. A three-yard run by Kevin McCall. That came with 429 on the clock. The kick by Trout. This time it's going to be deep. And it sends Cherry into the end zone and will stay there. So the first deep kick of the afternoon by John Trout. And this time no return call. I'm sure he was told on the sidelines, John, you're going to have to get that ball deep if you want to stop these runbacks. And I'm sure he got himself pumped up and he did a very good job. First and ten for the Ducks at their own 20 yard line. Cougars leading 21 to 6. Washington State. Now you see the score and the time left to go here in the first period. Washington State beat the Ducks last year at 24-7 in Pullman. Duck cheerleaders on the far sideline. Washington State won in 1982, 10-3 here in Eugene, and won again in 81, 39-7 in Pullman. The pitch out to McCall, the near sideline, across the 20. Kevin McCall. McCall gets a foul three yards. They brought Lou, they brought Lou Barnes around and said they were going to run a reverse. But he didn't give it to him, and McCall just kept the ball, picked up a few yards. I'm sure maybe later on in the game they would run that reverse, but this time they just kind of wanted to give him something to look at. And the clock runs down here in the first quarter with our score. It's Washington State 21 and Oregon 6. We'll be back with more in the second quarter right after these messages. Ducks. The Ducks with the football, second down and seven at their own 23-yard line. Long count by Miller dropping back. Deep over the middle, and it is incomplete all the way down to the Cougar 30-yard line, intended for Lou Barnes. Cedric Brown defended on the play, and Chris Miller can put the football up. Yes, they were going for that deep man. They were going for something deep, trying to make something happen. Rick Reynolds had very good coverage because Lou Barnes just ran deep, no moves, just trying to split the, the zone, and the ball is barely off his fingertips. Just a little bit overthrown. Wow. That was good coverage. Andy Reynolds was covering on the play. Cedric Brown came in behind him. Third down and seven at the Duck 23. 21 6, Cougars high in front. Miller has to put the football up and trouble. The flag is thrown. Pass over the middle. Incomplete attended again for Lou Barnes, but it was overthrown as the ball sailed out to midfield. But a flag is thrown back at the Duck 15 yard line. There's the hanky. 
could be holding against Oregon. And if it is, they will decline and Oregon will put it away. Now the special team unit on for Washington State. And it's fourth down and seven. And Mike Creecher will have to kick it away for the Ducks. So good job defensively by Washington State. Yes, they came all around. You keep, them, you keep Oregon back, back in bad field position, and if it's a good, if it's a good return, they can be across on their own, uh, across the 50-yard line in good field position for the uh, Cougars. Features in his own 10, steps up and gets it away. Ed Blunt, waiting and waiting at his own 31-yard line, and is down at the Cougar 34. Offense back on the field. Greg Aitken head downfield. Make the stop on Ed Blunt. Mike Feature has been playing that ball great so far today. I guess if you have a punter like that, he can get you out of bad field position. I'll tell you what, Paul, looking at the flags right above that new scoreboard here at Austin Stadium. Pretty stiff wind blowing across and a little bit in his face. And he kept that ball. Yes, he did. But a good job. Dan Devaney into the ball game as a linebacker for the Ducks. First and ten for the Cougs at their own 34-yard line. Wing kicks up. Logan Mays can't find too much running room over the left side. We were just talking about the wind blowing away from us. <laughs> the man blew right in our face. Losing a lot of the papers up here in our press box. The Cougar sideline. And right now they are coasting, leading 21-6 early in the second quarter. Must be a new feeling for them. I know they're not used to being right. ahead in the first half. They don't know what to do. They have come out fired up. Chase in motion. Ripping. Gets the football and he's down to the Cougar 40 yard line. It was second down and seven. They've been caught by the tackle by Griffin. Dale Dorning and David Culp combined on the tackle for the Ducks. Third down and four. Right at the 40 yard line. Motion of Sam Burks. With the Mays over the middle, and he's got the first down across the 45, and Mays out to the Cougar 46. Dan woke it on the stop, but not it up, or not in time, as Mays picked up the first and 10. That was a good run by Mays because he was hit before he got the first down. And like I say, usually one man is not going to bring Mays down, and one man didn't. He broke the first tackle and picked up enough yards for the first down. Ruben Mays. 861 yards, and we'll get you an update. And what Ruben has done in this ball game, first and ten at the Cougar 46, the pitch out to Mays, and he is shot right away. Got back to the line as Ruben is grabbed by David Culp and Dale Dorning. I guess, I guess when David Culp hit him, 296 pounds, that's, that's enough one man to stop him. But he had to have help. <laughs> Poutier came on to help him. Roland Poutier. David Culp. He is the That's a big man. 96 pounds. One man wide. Gain of a yard. It is second down and nine. Motion is Marshall. Quick pass. Chase. And it's two on the high side. And he can't find the handle. Right there, depending on the play, though, is Ed Holbert for Oregon. And it goes incomplete. Rain starting to fall here at Oxen Stadium. Again, that quick outlet pass to Rick Chase. Yes, they were going for that quick screen again. If he catches, if the ball is strong, if the ball is strong good, he has some running room because he can elude this one man. Usually, you allow, allow a guy like this with some room to beat one man. But the ball stones a little high. And I'll tell you one thing: with the light drizzle that's falling right now, that makes it a little bit tougher for the quarterback to get a real good grip on the football. It is third down and nine. Griffin looking for an open man, slips and falls on the wet turf, trying to turn the corner, got out to the 48-yard line, but goes down there. Todd Welsh comes on to the stop, but actually Griffin really slipped and trying to make his cut up field. Exactly. I was going to say, we were down on the field yesterday, and I was kind of stopping and going, trying right. to see what the footing was like, and I noticed that it was a little bit slippery, even though it's turf. 
is still just a little bit slippery. Fourth down and nine. And Harper to punt it away is on 35 yard line. Lou Barnes is deep for the Ducks. Pick is off high in the air. Barnes back to his own six yard line. You see him slip and fall and kick up some water when he tried to get his footing. So this is going to be a treacherous turf the rest of the afternoon. Yes, it is, and one of the guidelines, as we see, it's a beautiful punt, and I'll say one of the guidelines is using, when the punt returns to talk, the ball goes over your head past the 10-yard line, you don't field it. And when you're in college, once you get on your knees, you're down. So that was a, it was a touchy uh, play by Lou Barnes, and this time it didn't, it wasn't in his favor. Look at head coach Rich Brooks as you take a look at the turf now, the Cougar sideline. Timeout is called by Lee Morgan. A flag is thrown at the 45-yard line. A penalty against the Ducks, I believe. But the turf looks nice and dry, but you saw that the water that was kicked up by Barnes as he tried to get his footing and trying to feel the punt. That coach Jim Walden gets the ball for the referee. 11.42 to go here in the first half. Penalty against the Ducks. 21-6, the Cougars on top of the Ducks. Oregon all the way back at their own three-yard line, just across the three. So the Ducks way back in their own territory. Trying to get some breathing room. They give it to the tailback for the call. Or make it Tony Cherry into the ball game. Tony Cherry into the ball game as a tailback for McCall and Cherry gets a few yards. Rod Cleveland on the tackle along with Jim Krakowski and Milford Hodge. Well, they call it no gain on the play. It is second down and ten. Miller. And it's incomplete. Looking for his tight end, Doug Herman, bending across the near hash mark, and it's low, and Herman just can't get to it. Yes, he had him open also. It's a nice tight pass, but it wasn't high enough. It was a rollout. It was a rollout by Miller, and he sets up nicely, but he's just not able to get the ball up. Chris Miller trying to get the Duck offense going. Yeah, on this rainy afternoon in Watson Stadium. Game number four in the Pac-10 season for the Cougars. Number five for the Ducks. Third down and nine at the Duck four. Ball and Mack to the backfield. But Miller will throw the football to the near sideline. Goes McCall. McCall has it to 10. Cuts up field. Gets away from the tackle to 20. And now he's out of bounds at the Duck 20. Six yard line. And a great job by Kevin McCall. Ricky Reynolds finally on the stop for the Cougars. Black stops with 10:51 showing here in the second period. Yes, that this is a good job, good job of protection. It allows allows Miller to set up in the pocket, step up, and find McCall coming out of the backfield. McCall stops, misses the first tackle, and picks up the first down. That's a big play. Good footwork right there because as he tried to make that cut, he slipped a little bit and shutting the one tackler and then got a field for some more yards. First and ten at the duck 26. Oregon. Cougars leading 21 to 6. Pitch out to McCall, looking to throw the football high in the air, and it's going to be incomplete and almost intercepted by Cedric Brown. That pass was nowhere near the intended receiver of Blue Barnes. It was well overthrown, and Cedric Brown had a chance to intercept, but he couldn't come up with the football at the 30 yard line. We saw them practice on this play yesterday. It looked like it might have been a mix up between uh, McCall and and Lou Barnes, because Lou Barnes stopped, and McCall threw it deep, so it was probably a mix-up. Over through it about 10 yards over the head of Lou Barnes. He's a left-handed thrower, so he had to turn his whole body around right. to throw that ball. Now Cherry and Alex Mack out of the eye formation for Oregon. We're at second down and 10. Miller rolling to his right. Complete to Doug Herman, the 45, and out across the 50, down to the Cougar 45-yard line. A nice catch by the tight end of the Ducks from Renton, Washington, Doug Herman. This is, this is the same play they tried to run out of the end zone, but it's going the opposite way this time. He's going to his right, therefore he has a better angle. Since he's right-handed, he throws it to Doug Herman. Doug Herman picks up a nice game. Ron Collins on the tackle. Rich Brooks 
First and ten for the Ducks at the Cougar 46 yard line. This time, takes the 40, and he's tackled from behind Chris Miller down to the Cougar 36 yard line. Good job by the defensive secondary by the Cougars as Miller was looking downfield for a long, long time, but never did have a chance to throw the football. Yes, it looked as though they were running the same play they just ran to the other side. Roll out. This time, Doug Herman is covered well. Chris Miller sets up. He has a good. He does a good job of faking. I've seen him do this a couple of times today. He, as you see, he's a good runner. And Jeff Loomis comes up to grab him from behind to make the tackle, and now they will bring out the chains to see if Chris Miller has enough for the first down for the Ducks. 9:58 to go here in the second quarter, and as you see, it's going to be a little bit short by the length of the football. I see Chris Miller hasn't learned the uh, slide technique most quarterbacks use. I'm sure he'll coach with him to try to practice on that this game. In the first quarter, we have the first quarter stats as you see some of the chilly pants here at Austin Stadium. That guy didn't even bring a jacket. All he brought was a sweater. He looks like he's regretting <laughs> that, doesn't he? I don't have one either. What am I talking about? Ruben Mays in the first quarter, nine carries for 41 yards. I wanted to mention Ruben Mays because before this ball game is over, he's going to chalk up a lot of yardage. Second down, short yardage. Reverse, and the pitch goes to Holman. He tries the long throw deep downfield, wide open is Barnes. Touchdown, the Ducks. Scott Holman to Lou Barnes. We have the first quarter stats as you see some of the chilly fans at the stadium. That guy didn't even bring a jacket. All he brought was a sweater. He looks like he's regretting that, doesn't he? I don't have one either. What am I talking about? Ruben Mays in the first quarter, nine carries for 41 yards. I wanted to mention Ruben Mays because before this ball game is over, he's going to chalk up a lot of yardage. Second down, short yardage. Reverse, and the pitch goes to Holman. He tries the long throw deep downfield, wide open is Barnes. Touchdown, the Ducks. Scott Holman to Lou Barnes. Holy smoke, what a play for Oregon. They were on the board 21-12. The Cougars still lead them. Little rival down, but we all thought they were working on this play like yesterday. This time, this time there was no mix-up. It looks like it might be a reverse, so I know it's, it stops the linebacker and it stops the defensive backs. And Holman does a good job of throwing the ball, and Barnes does a very good job of knowing where he is on the field and catching it and sliding in the end zone. Defensive back slipped and fell down, and Lou Barnes was wide open in the end zone. Outstanding pass by Holman. The pitch, it goes to McCall, to Holman, and then the long throw downfield, the touchdown pass from Holman. The split end to his wide receiver, Lou Barnes. They will go for the two-point try. Roll into his right. Miller looking in the end zone over the middle, and it's incomplete. Incomplete to Scott Holman, who was the duck who threw the touchdown pass. And with 9.34 to go in the second quarter, our score, it's the Cougars 21 and the Ducks 12. Six-yard touchdown pass from Scott Holman to Lou Barnes, and it's the Cougars 21 and the Ducks 12 as the two-point conversion try again failed. Now here's the play that the Ducks score their second touchdown on 36 yards away. Holman, pretty good throw. Very good throw. And wide open is Lou Barnes in the end zone, and he just curdles and hugs that football, makes the touchdown reception. The Cougar sideline looking on. Rick Chase, the deep man for Washington State. Rain falling down here in Eugene, Oregon. Watson Stadium. 9.34 to go here in the first half. And the kick is away by Dean Otto. High, deep kick. End over end. And Rick Chase puts it outside of the end zone. So twice the Ducks have tried for the two-point conversion. And twice they have failed. And the Cougars have a... Nine-point lead. Mark Rippon back in there at quarterback. 
and Rippon did a nice job here in the first half, leading the Cougars to their quick 21 points. Seven plays, 96 yards for the Ducks. Five minutes and 26 seconds. Possession time for Oregon. Rippon will throw it on first down to the far sideline. He's got Marshall. John has it at the Cougar 26-yard line. Ed Holbert down the stop. John Marshall, not very fancy, but I tell you what, he gets the job done. Outstanding receiver. A lot of times, that's, that's what you want. Even though some receivers are fast and quick, if they don't get the job done, they're not ineffective. It doesn't matter. As long as you can get the job done, that's what a lot of coaches want. Gain of six, and second down and four for the Cougars. Motion is reeling. And off over the middle and out to the 30 yard line. Ruben Mays out of the carry. Dan Devaney out of the tackle. Folks, the shelter of their umbrellas. And Paul, I think that could be maybe a factor in this ball game. This could make it tough for both these ball clubs the rest of the way, that light drizzle. Yes, it is. I believe the defenses would be at the disadvantage because the offense, receivers, and running backs would know where they're going. First and ten for the Cougars. And the pitch out low, but it's handled nicely by Mays. Up here, the 40, 45, 50. Ruben is going to go all the way. The 20, the 10. Touchdown, Ruben Mays for the Cougars. His second touchdown of the ball game. Holy smoke, what a run by Ruben Mays. And he has picked off right where he left off last week against Stanford. What a run by Ruben Mays. Yes, it is. And it, was, wow. it was a beer play. Counter dive and you catch the ball. Nice catch. Nice pickup, first of all. Great blocking. And here you see the speed and power of this man. He just breaks the top and no one. Looks like a replay of last week. Unbelievable. 70 yard touchdown run by Ruben Mays. As John Trout comes on for the extra point. He broke free and had clear sailing. The kick by Trout and it is wide. Wide to the left, and with 8.20 left to go here in the first half, our score. It's the Cougars, 27, and the Ducks, 12. Ruben Mays on the Cougars' sideline, getting the congratulations by his teammates and his coaches. Raining out, the youngster with the umbrella. What a ball game for Ruben Mays and the entire ball club, offensively and defensively. One more look at that touchdown run by... Ruben Mays going 70 yards. So, so this play all started off by, by a beautiful catch by Mays because the ball was thrown low. And it's good blocking by the wide receiver. He cuts through a hole. Goodbye. Another day at the office. Doug Judge, the strong safety, was looking for Mays to come a little wider, but he cut back inside away from Judge. Ran away from a couple of other tacklers, left him in his dust, and it was 70 yards straight down straight field down for Ruben Mays. Down. See you later, folks. And, Mays was walking inside the end zone, enjoying a drink. Only three plays, 80 yards, 1 minute, 14 seconds. And just like that, the Cougars now lead 27 to 12. And then get the off this time to get out there and warm up. They may be a little cold out there on the sidelines. <laughs> Tremendous ball game by the Cougars. These men are Tony Cherry and Anthony Newman. Like both deep men for this ball club. Oh, yeah. Cherry and Newman run the ball. And no more ends. Going to be taken by Cherry at his three-yard line. Upfield, 15 to 20. 25 and down to the 28-yard line. Tony Cherry. Tackle made by Ricky Reynolds. Ricky Reynolds on the top. Right the ball to 28. First and 10. 8 13 to go here at halftime. And usually at halftime, especially the last few weeks, head coach Jim Walden has talked about trying to get back in the ball game. Right now, he said, well, just, or we'll say, take what you've done in the first half, just do the same thing. That's right. Let's not get complacent. Go for some more. First and 10 for the Ducks at their own 27. Mack and Cherry in the backfield. Down they have to throw the football pass and going to complete to his tight end, Doug Herman. Herman is stopped at the 37-yard line. Doug Herman 
Denton Washington here in the ballgame with 15 catches for 229 yards. He's a senior, 6'3", 225. Nice catch. Yes, that's a that's a really a safe play for the quarterback and receiver. The tight end releases, goes about eight yards, turns around, quarterback drops back and drills it to him. Doug Herman, number 87, on the right side of the offensive line for the Ducks. Pick up of nine, it is second down and one. And the give is to Cherry. He's got the first down and a lot more. The 50 to 45 spins away. Down to the Cougar 48 yard line and one whale of a run by Tony Cherry. Finally tackled by Cedric Brown. Cedric Brown. Ball game is a long way from being over. Tony Cherry, an outstanding run. And it's first and ten for Oregon at the Cougar 43. It's a nice off tackle play. Number 70, Steve Jensen does a very good job. Cherry finds the hole and it's off to the races. Good job of blocking by Jeff Lou Barnes. <laughs> He's out there. Cherry ran <laughs> over the back of Barnes and trying to get away from the tackle. Miller to throw. Near sideline. Open is Barnes and he's got it and down at the Cougar 24 yard line. Lou Barnes. That pass just got over the fingertips, I believe, of Jeff Doolum or Gerald Waters. Jim Walden on the sidelines. Let's take a look at it one more time. A nice pass by Chris Miller. Yes, Lou Barnes comes from the opposite side of the field. He just goes across, finds a hole, and it's a rollout pass. So Miller can just set up and try to find his receiver. Another first down for the Ducks. Seven minutes to go in the second quarter. Cougars leading 27 to 12. Yeah! Rolling to his right. Pass is off and incomplete. He wanted to hit the ball to his tight end, Doug Herman, but it's low and wide as Herman was down to the Cougar 10 yard line. Second down and 10. This may be the game of the Ducks to have rollout pass to avoid that rush to get Miller on the outside so you have more, more sight to see you on his receivers. Second down and 10. The Officials will try to keep the football dry with a towel, then they spot the football. It's at the Cougar 23-yard line. line of scrimmage. He picks up some good yards. Gerald Waters made the tackle from Washington State. Just across the Cougar 10 yard line. First and 10 for the Ducks. The motion is fired. Back again. He is stopped at the line of scrimmage and all down by Milford Hodge right there to greet Big Alex Smack, and you talk about big Milford Hodge, 6'3", 240, he's a senior. Plays off the block well, and it's kind of tackling that you, when you're going through drills oh. before the game, form tackling, that's exactly what that was. Grabbed him around the numbers and just held on and drilled him back. But he does pick up a yard, it is second down, and nine for the Ducks. Call the offense the crack attack. Eugene. <laughs> Into the end zone, Barnes and touchdown Oregon. He got one foot down, Lou Barnes. The nine yard touchdown catch of the Ducks on the board. What a catch by Barnes and what a touch by the quarterback, Chris Miller. This is a quick, this is a quick phase where I can try to take advantage. What happens is the defensive back turns his back and he doesn't see the ball. Barnes does a very good job of adjusting to the ball. And in college, all you have to do is have one foot in and he got it in. Outstanding catch by Lou Barnes. And they again will try for the two-point conversion. They have failed twice already. It is 27 to 18. The Ducks are back in the ball game. An offensive show here in the first half. 5.47 to go in the second quarter. The Ducks will try it one more time. The two-point conversion. Miller looking into the end zone. Passes off that. It's good. It's going to be complete to Kevin McCall coming out of the backfield. And they have the two-point conversion. And with 5.47 to go here in the second quarter, our score. It's the Cougars 27 and the Ducks 20. This is Sunday, the first half. Wow. 
like the offense is doing what they want to do. Neither one of the defense are able to stop either offense. <laughs> like I said, that scoreboard is getting a good workout today. It certainly is. Fasten your seatbelts. We have a long way to go in this ball game. 27 to 20. The Cougars lead with 5.47 to go before the halftime activities here at Auction Stadium. Handshakes for Kevin McCall. And for McCall, that's his fourth touchdown of the year. I guess for the fans on a cold day, you want to see a lot of scoring. It allows you to get up and move around. <laughs> you know what, you know, those folks are just kind of sitting there enjoying it, I guess. They look like duck fans, but it's kind of tough to jump around. Kevin McCall, the touchdown, or the two-point conversion catch. Rick Chase, the deep man for Washington State. The kick by Otto. Chase into the end zone, and will stay there. First and ten for the Cougars at their own 20-yard line. So still plenty of time before halftime here at Hudson Stadium. Mike Griffin has the instructions from head coach Jim Walden. The, uh, the Oregon fans are trying to urge their defense on to stop this so we can get the ball back, so the Oregon State and Oregon University get the ball back again. An exciting ball game. Exactly. Motion is Michael James. Is Jamie Olson, the starting tight end this afternoon for the Cougars, Vince Slayton. Injured and Jamie Olson making his first start of the year. So the penalty will go against the Cougars. Vince Slayton with an Achilles strain. And that game last week against the Stanford Cargo was doubtful for today. And Jamie Olson is the starting tight end. Five-yard penalty. It's back to the Cougar 15. Or it's first and 15. Motion to the near side. Ruben Mays. Griffin. Over thrown. Incomplete. And tenant for Jamie Olson. He's 6'2", 232, a senior. So it's second and 15 for the Cougars. And he was open on that play also. It's just a bad pass by Rippin. I'm sure he wish he could have that one back, bring it down a little bit. Olsen was open at the Cougar 30-yard line where they need to get the first down. Second and 15, wide to the right. Is Breeland into the ball game. Ocean James. Second and Mays, and Mays gets back to the original line of scrimmage, the 20-yard line, stopped there by Ron Johnson, who just checked into the ballgame defensively for the Ducks. Now third down and 10 for the Cougars. And if they don't pick up the first down right here, the Ducks will have some pretty good field position. 27 to 20 here in the second quarter. You see the time, just over five minutes left to go before halftime. So kind of a big play right here already for the Cougars. Trying to keep their hands on the football. Motion to the far side is Mays out of the backfield. Ripping in trouble. Big rush, but passes off, and it's complete to Marshall. He's got the first down to the Cougar 45-yard line. Big rush, and Ripping a good pass over the middle. He finds John Marshall. Yes, they caught him. Wow. The, they caught him in a man-to-man defense. Ripping looks like he throws that ball off his heels, and it's a very good throw, accurate throw. Nice catch. Yes, it was a man-to-man. He beats his man. And get out of a, they make a crucial play and get out of a bad situation. Big play and the Big connection play. from Mark Griffin to John Marshall. First and ten for the Cougars at their own 45 yard line. Ruben Mays up the middle and Mays gets out. Close to the Cougar 48 yard line, tackled by Bob Hewitt, the middle linebacker, and the defensive left tackle, David Culp. Second down and the Cougar 47. Tell you one thing, with just over four minutes to go right now, Paul Johns, a big score would be right here before halftime to get about a 14-point lead over the Ducks. Exactly, especially the way the Ducks are moving the ball. You have to keep the score, at least try to keep two touchdown lead. It seems like they always knock one touchdown off. Jim Walden, game plan, very effective right away. They jumped out to a quick 14 to nothing lead in the ball game. It is second down and eight after the two-yard carry by Mays. Ripken, the pitch out. Ruben to the near side, the 50, the 40, and he is taking the bounds at the Duck 34-yard line. And another
Miller, first down for Washington State, and the clock stops with 3.48 remaining in the second period. Drew Mays did a very good job of just uh, slowing down his speed, a little stutter step there, because they have three men out there to make the tackle. He does a little stutter step, and then we get to the outside, and uh, he's doing a very good job once he gets his hands on the ball. Opening the way, I didn't see it, but a block on Doug Judge that allowed Mays to turn the corner. First down and 10 at the 33-yard line. 3.32 to go in the second quarter. Junior Cavalacossi into the ball game, and he is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Grabbed by Dale Dorning, defensive left end. Cavalacossi will get a yard in a second down and nine. All the Cougar offense doing a pretty good job keeping their eyes on their strong safety of uh, Oregon, Doug Judge. Yes, they are. If he was one of the key players, they had to stop in order to be effective with their fear. And they seem to be doing a pretty good job so far this first half. Second down and nine. Tadalatowski starts in motion to the near side, ripping the throw. That's plenty of time. The pass is off downfield and tennis for Tadalatowski intercepted. At the Duck 5 yard line, the interception, Wendell Kaysen, the left cornerback, and the Ducks have the football with 2.41 to go in the half. That was not a good pass by Rippin. His primary receiver wasn't open. John Marsh wasn't open. He tried to go down the sideline. But the defensive back has very good coverage. And Tyler, and Tyler Tulsi tries to, tries to play a defensive back at that time, but... It's kind of hard to play defensive back with the ball thrown on the inside of you. No interceptions last week. That's his 13th interception on the year, Mark Rippin. First and 10 for the Ducks. At their own, they spot the football near the six-yard line. And up goes the Mack. Flag is thrown. Alex Mack still on his feet. Avoids a couple of tackles. Has some room on the right side. The 20, 25, 30. And finally taken out of bounds. All the way down to the Duck. 35-yard line. What a run by Alex Mack, the fullback. Flag is thrown. Nice run by Mack. Let me tell you, that man shows some moves on this play, right? After he breaks the first tackle, you see him throw a move right here. He throws another move right there. Oh, yes. Great move. Even though the play is called back, you can see the run ability of Alvin Mack, Alex Mack. That nullifies a tremendous run by Alex Mack. A big break for Washington State. Penalty, illegal procedure against the Ducks will bring Oregon back to their three-yard line. Casey now that interception, his first interception of the year, and has given the Ducks back the football. 2.32 left to go in the second quarter, and the Cougars leading Oregon 27-20. to It has been some kind of first half here in the rain at Hudson Stadium. All the way back to their own three-yard line. Bland and Cherry into the offensive backfield. Right now they're located in the end zone, but Miller will throw it. It's a football, and oh, he's almost tackled in the end zone. He gets out back to the Duck two-yard line. As you can see, the Ducks have a lot of confidence in their pass and attack and their pass protection because they're throwing out of the end zone. Miller doesn't find anyone and barely gets back out of the end zone to avoid a safety. Good pursuit by Brent White and Milford Hodge to make the stop on Chris Miller. Exactly two minutes to go in the second quarter. Bears leading by 7, 27 to 20. It is second down at 14. Ducks with the backs to the wall. The Cougars want to keep them right there. The handoff. And stopped right away by Jim Kukowski and then all back into the end zone. It was back, back, but into the ball game now. Offensively for the Ducks, Larry Todd Bland, 6'2", 225, a junior, had no room at all. As Jim Krakowski is right there to make the tackle, and the tackle he did make. I mean, it was a solid tackle. Once he made the, once he made contact, there was no forward motion at all. Good solid hit by Rogowski. Alex Mack is now back in the ball game. The crowd here at Autzen Stadium bundled up under the elements. You see the score. The Cougars leading by seven. 
with 139 on the clock. Oregon Band getting ready for the halftime activities. Time out on the field. The Ducks with the football at their own two-yard line. Alex Mack back in the ball game for Todd Bland who carried on that last play for the Ducks. 139. Left to go here in the half. Rick Rears along with Paul Johns here at Austin Stadium next week. Cougars will be back home in Pullman to take on the Beavers of Oregon State. Oregon State playing Stanford this afternoon. Third down play coming up for Oregon. Third and 14 for the Ducks. Wide to the right side is Lou Barnes. The end zone camera, that's how much room the quarterback Chris Bowie has to work with. Deep in the end zone, dropping back to throw. The outlet pass, McCall has it. And he's at the 10, still on his feet and pulled out of bounds. Close to a first down. At the duck, 14-yard line. And a great job by Kevin McCall. Yes, he does. It's a safe pass. McCall comes out of backfield. He looks downfield. The primary receiver is the back. He throws to McCall. McCall's trying to get the first down, and he almost gets it. He, he pulls two Rico people. Tipton. He gets out of bounds, stops the clock. Has to grab McCall by the sleeve and grab him out of bounds. Got away from the tackle of Jeff Dulham, and now the punt attempt by Preacher. They did not get the first down. Preacher back at his two-yard line. Had Blunt to keep that for the Cougars. Pick is off. It's going to be on the short side. Bounces at midfield. A high bounce taken by Blunt. And he stopped right away at the Cougar 42-yard line. And the Cougars have it back with 1.21 to go in the half. The time on the new scoreboard here at Austin Stadium. And the Cougars lead 27-20. So just a little over a minute to go here in the first half of play. Ball on the Cougar 41 yard line. Mark Rippin having a good day guiding the offense here for Washington State. And the steady light rain here in Eugene, Oregon. Marshall in behind. Rippin in motion. Mays up the middle, moving to 50. And he's down to duck territory at the Oregon 43 yard line. And Ruben Mays with that quick burst of speed right up the middle. Gets a first down for the Cougars. It's a draw play. They have one back, three wide right receiver, one back offense. Who they give it to Mays? A draw play. And the man picks up some yards and gets on the Wendell. left side of territory. Mason finally on the tackle. First and ten. The Cougars at the 43. Rippin, deep downfield, near sideline, and it's overthrown, intended for Michael James. Clock stops on the incompleted pass, 107 to go. Jason and Wilkin defending on the play for the Ducks. It's good coverage by secondary, then Rippin did the, the thing that you tell a quarterback to do if no one's open. Throw it out of bounds. Don't risk an interception. Second down and 10. Mays, the lone setback, 107 to go in the half. 27-20, the Cougars on top of the Ducks. Pass is off, and it's incomplete intended for Marshall to the far sideline at the Duck 37-yard line. Play took only four seconds off the clock. Now 103 remain. Put down the umbrella crowd. Mascot. Hoping that Washington State can get on the board one more time before the half expires. A little over a minute to go. Who does a great job offensively today. Here in the rain against the Oregon Ducks. Third down and ten. And Rippin, Rippin will put up the football. No, he won't. Ruben May drops the middle, the 30, 25, and all the way down to the Ducks, 22 yard line. Like I said, he'll hand off to Ruben May. <laughs> you call that one right on the nose. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is great blocking by the front line. They are just opening up holes and allowing wow. Mays to run. And he, what does he do better than anything? He runs. Good, good job of running. First down for the Cougars. All the way down to the Duck 22 yard line. I guess that's why I'm up here. Again, Ruben Mays over the middle. Still on his feet and now down at the Duck 11 yard line. 
So the offense has been right here to give the ball to Ruben Mays, and he's done the job and come through. Two draw plays in a row, and they picked up a substantial number of yards. 44 seconds on the clock. That man has been tremendous. Over 200 yards last week. He had 200 yards rushing, 201, and a 16-14 win against Ball State. Jim Walden on the sideline for some of play with Rick Chase, who checks into the ball game, and now he comes back to the near sideline as the chains go out to see whether or not Ruben Mays picked up the first down. Oh, looks like he got it. No. He didn't move it short. The first down at the 12. They used a piece of paper to, uh, to measure that one. That's how, that's how short it was. About as, about as thick as a piece of paper. Second down. I'm going to measure it one more time. Sometimes they'll check the spot. <laughs> Look how close that is. Referee Gordon Reese. Has his foot down to mark the exact spot, and now here we go. 44 seconds on the clock, second down, and about an inch. Griffin will throw in the end zone, passes up and incomplete, overthrown over the top of John Marshall. On the far side of the end zone, defending is Doug Judge, the strong safety. Third and one. Burns came open across the middle. Actually, he slipped, come out the line of scrimmage. It was like a crisscross play. John Marsh is the inside receiver. He runs to the outside. Burns is the outside receiver. He comes under the inside. He came open, but it was a little too late. Third down and an inch for the Cougars at the next 12 yard line. One thing for sure, they are definitely within the range of John Trout, their field goal kicker, an extra point specialist. Motion is chased to the near side, and Ripley will keep the football himself. He's got the first down as Ripley gets across the 10 yard line and down to the deck nine. Dale Dorning and Doug Judge on the stop defensively for Oregon. And the Cougars will have it first and goal. And timeout is called by Washington State with 33 seconds on the clock here in the second quarter. So the Cougars knock it on the door, a chance to put up some points. Question is, is it going to be seven or is it going to be three? And the Cougars would like to get it in one more time. There's the score, 27 to 20. The Cougars lead. Had an outstanding start. Now the sideline of the Oregon Ducks. Hewitt's the middle linebacker talking with Rich Brooks. Cougars get in on the board quickly. A one-yard touchdown run and an 80-yard touchdown drive by the Cougars on their first possession of the ball game to make it 7 nothing. Then a punt attempt by Harper, but it was snapped back to Rick Chase, and he went 78 yards for a touchdown to make it 14 nothing Cougars. Then it was 14-6 on a three-yard run by Kevin McCall of Oregon, and 21-6 after a three-yard touchdown run by Mays at the end of the first quarter, and that's our score as we get ready for halftime, 27-20, but 33 seconds left on the clock. First and goal for the Cougars. Just across the deck 10 yard line. Here we go. Ripping. Pass in the end zone, incomplete, and a little mix up on the play. The pass was intended for Michael James, but it was nowhere near either James or Sam Burris in the end zone. They had everybody on the left side. They rolled to the left side, and no one was open. He did a good job of just getting rid of the ball because there was a pretty good rush on him also. 28 seconds. Second down and goal. Oh, the near side is Chase. Wide to the left is Sam Burris. On the slot left is John Marshall. Long set back to Ruben Mays. Pass in the end zone and tenant for Burris, but well beyond his reach, it falls incomplete. Now 22 seconds on the clock. Remain Roland Poutier. Putting a rush on Rippon. And the play coming in from the near sideline. Now what do you look for right here, Paul? 22 seconds to go. Third down and third and goal at the 10. I look for them to try another pass into the end zone. But I feel he's been instructed. If no one's open, 
Don't risk an interception. Throw it, throw it up into the stands if you have to. Last time I looked for the pass, they went to Ruben Davis. Let's see what they do right here. They throw the football. Passes up. Forrest has a shot. And it's incomplete. Little overthrown into the end zone. And it's going to be fourth and ten. Here is John Trout to try for the field goal attempt. Sam Burst, the intended receiver. He was wide open. Yes, he, play. he beat the man at the line of scrimmage. As soon as the ball was snapped, the defensive back was beaten. All ripping had to do was just leg up, lay it up, soft ball. Ball will be spotted at the 16-yard line. A try of 26 yards for John Trout. He's been very accurate. Back and center, the kick by Trout, and it is good. No doubt about it. And John Trout adds the field goal, and with 15 seconds left to go in the half, our score now, it's Washington State 30 and Oregon 20, and a big three points right there, getting ready to go into the locker room at halftime. I guess you rather, you rather, if we're down that far, you want to get something out. I know they would have rather had six points, but if you can't get six, get three. There's the score. The Cougars lead the Ducks by 10, 30 to 20. 50 points scoring-wise here in the first half. We were looking for more of a defensive ball game, but both ball clubs going right at each other. It was 21 to 6. There's a look at the scoreboard. Only 15 seconds on the clock. Cheerleaders. Sideline as Trout gets ready to kick it up, kick it away. 21 to 6 after the first period. The Cougars led. Now they have a 10 point lead. Tony Cherry and Anthony Newman, the deep band for Oregon. away. Low kick, bobbled and then recovered at the 25, the 30, and out to the 32-yard line. John Trout coming over to the Cougar sideline. Cougar cheerleaders with a lot to cheer about here in the first half. Ten seconds on the clock here in the second quarter. From the 32. <laughs> right now you just want to let that big play, play burn you. Looks like they're getting ready for a punt return. Miller in a lot of trouble gets away from Eric Howard. Rolling to his right. Now the pass is off and it's incomplete. Trying to get the ball out to midfield where Lou Barnes goes sliding after it and time runs out. Here in the first half, and what a first half it was, but wait a second, as everybody heads for the runway, they just put on the brakes right there, but now, now they say it's all over in the first half, and how about it, our score at halftime here at Eugene, Oregon, our score, the Cougars 30, and the Ducks 20, we'll be back with our halftime activities right after these messages. Here we go, Paul. It is halftime here at Austin Stadium. Hello again, everybody. Rick Riz along with Paul Johns. A shootout in the first half. The Cougars lead by a score of 30 to 20 over the Ducks of Oregon in quite a first half, especially that first quarter. The Cougars went right out and went right to the Oregon Duck defense. Yes, they did so, they've done something in the first half that they haven't been able to do the, the whole year. They scored points. They scored points by giving the ball to Ruben Mays and letting him do his job. He has 20 carries for 197 yards. They've offset that by throwing to the receivers and throwing the quick quick pass to Rick Chase and letting him do some, he's done a lot of damage with that. Good job of mixing things up. You have to give credit to the Oregon offensive well. They came back and made it a 27-20 ball game on a, a Touchdown pass to Lou Barnes, but then the field goal by John Trout, and that's a big field goal to make it a 10-point margin. Yes, that was a big field goal because the way Oregon has been coming back and answering these touchdown, they need to keep, stay at least one touchdown or 10 points ahead because neither defense has been able to stop the offenses. 
We'll be back with a look at the first half statistics right after these messages. The Cougars lead the Ducks by a score of 30-20 to 20 here at halftime. We're getting ready for the second half of play. Hello again, everybody. Rick Riz and Paul Johns in the first half statistics. Washington State, 15 first downs. Oregon, 7. Move the football very well. Yes, they are. The first, the first quarter, Washington State had 7 first downs. Oregon didn't have any. But uh, So the game is evened out a little bit more the second half, but Washington State still up by 10 points. Rushing the football, the Cougars 302 yards on the ground, 197 of those by Reuben Mays and two touchdowns. So quite a first half by Reuben Mays. We look for even more from Reuben as we get ready for the second half. Yes, he's picked up where he left off last week, seemed like another day at the office. We'll be back with the second half kickoff right after these messages. Getting ready for the third quarter of play, the Cougars lead the Ducks by a score of 30 to 20. Washington State to kick it away. Anthony Newman and Tony Cherry of the deep men back for Oregon, and it's going to be Cherry at his own six-yard line. We're underway in the second half, the 20. Upfield out to the 25, then to the 26-yard line, and the Ducks with the football. The Cougars 30, and the Ducks 20, quite a first half of play. Ricky Reynolds downfield to make the tackle on Cherry on the return for Oregon. Final score, USC 31. In the first half, Reuben Mays, 20 carries for 100 and 97 yards and two touchdowns. He had a 70-yard touchdown run. First and 10 for the Ducks at their own 26. Out of the eye formation, Mack and McCall in the backfield. The pitch out goes to McCall. Turns the right side to 30. Leaps over one tackler all the way down to the Ducks. 39-yard run. He's got himself a first down. Lee Blakeney on the tackle. He looks like he may be hurt. Kevin McCall. Injured on the play, and that would be a big loss looking at the right knee of Kevin McCall. That would be a big setback to the Ducks if McCall cannot come back in this ball game because he's their leading rusher. One of the main attacks on the Duck offense, so hopefully he'll be okay. Looking at that last play, we get a chance to see where McCall took the hit. Nice, it's a nice sweep, and, and he puts himself in a vulnerable position. When you go up in the air, sometimes you come down where you don't want to come down. And in that pile, looks like his knee might have just gotten twisted up, or hip maybe right on the, got a frog in his knee. And he is hurt. Heading over to the far sideline, Kevin McCall taken out of the ball game. And it's a nice round of applause from the fans here at Austin Stadium. So, bad break right there for Oregon. Tony Cherry replaces Kevin McCall in the offensive backfield. It's first and ten for the Ducks at the 39 yard line. And right away it goes to Cherry. The 45 and across midfield. And he's got a duck first down to the Cougar 48 before he's tackled by Gerald Waters. So a nice run by Tony Cherry. In the last two plays, they've had a lot of success running to, run to the on their right side, running to their right side. The offensive line has done a very good job of taking care of Washington State's left side. Picking up some valuable yards there. Mike McCarty now checks into the ball game offensively for the Ducks. He sets up wide to the right. It's another first down for the Ducks at the Cougar 48-yard line. Out of the eye formation and motion to the near side is Lou Barnes. 30-20, to 20, the Cougars lead by 10 foot pass to Barnes. And he slips down. At the Cougar 47-yard line, trying to make a cut up field, but that turf is still on the slick side. It is no longer raining. We had a steady drizzle throughout the entire first half of play, but looking out right now, it appears that the rain has stopped, but the turf is still very tricky to run on. Second down and nine, a gain of only a yard. No 
yards of the football at the Cougar 47-yard line. 13, 37 to go in the third quarter. Miller rolling to his right. And it's intercepted and lost by Ron Collins. Oh, Collins almost had his fourth interception on the year, but he bobbled the football and could not hang on down at the Cougar 33-yard line. I don't know if Miller did not see Collins or whether it's a rollout, rollout, and he's looking for Barnes all the way. Barnes goes close to the sideline and stops because he can't go any further. And Miller throws it right into Barnes' hands. But he can't hold on to it. Todd Black and Tony Cherry now to the offensive backfield as you took a look at Ron Collins. Knows of the football, very close to the Cougar 47. Move Barnes wide to the right. Third down and nine. Miller will put it up. Almost intercepted by Irwin Chappelle down at the Cougar 32 yard line. Under thrown, it was intended for Scott Holman to split in. Never got there. Irwin Chappelle ran that play just right. That's two interceptions and two plays that they had a chance for and missed. Now it's fourth down and nine. They did stop the drive, and that's the main thing. But they, when you have an interception, you have a chance for it. You have to come up with those type of plays. And Mike Preacher will punt it away on fourth yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. And one returning punch this afternoon for the Cougars. Stands back at his 11-yard line. Preacher at his 440-yard line. Gets the kick away. High kick. The catch being called for by Blunt, and he is hit. The flag is thrown. The ball is set free, but Blunt this time was calling for the fair catch. I'm going to have to take a look. I think it was Scott Skipper, an outside linebacker downfield, who got a piece of Blunt as he was calling for the fair catch and ran into Blunt. He was trying to, he was trying to avoid him. He was just trying to run by. It looked like he was trying to run by him to scare him. He tried to avoid him, but he just got a piece of him. And you have to know where the ball is at all times. Right away, the flag is thrown. Decided the infraction. Interference on the fair catch against the Ducks at the Cougar 13-yard line. Rich Brooks, a season with the Ducks. Man has been around both the collegiate and the professional ranks. First and ten for the Cougars at the 18-yard line. Ruben Mays in the first half had 197 yards on the ground. He is over the 1,000 mark for the season. He now has 1,058 yards rushing the football. He is number one in the Pac-10. Mark Rippon had set up the offense, but they will try it one more time. Lock and stop. 13.08 on the clock here in the third quarter. Cougars leading 30 to 20. So what a day already for Ruben Mays. Two touchdowns. And 197 yards. He has a 70-yard touchdown run. That goes to Mays. Mike is thrown. Ruben got a yard, maybe two. Ruben almost lost that ball. He's up in the foul. The ball almost got away from him. Roland Poutier on the tackle. And the penalty will go against the Cougars. David Kopp almost stripped that ball away from Ruben. He grabbed that left arm and caused the ball to pop up in the air. Ruben was able to catch it. Would have been a big play for Oregon. So the yardage has stepped off against the Cougars. They would like to come out with the same attack that they had right at the outset of the ball game where they chalked up 14 quick points against the Duck defense to take that early 14-0 lead. Rick Chase into the ball game offensively for the Cougars. Now with the football all the way back to their 9 yard run. Need to get out for the 28 for a first down. Griffin to throw. Open over the middle is Marshall. Now the pass complete to Marshall, and he fumbles the football. It's going to be recovered by the Ducks. Marshall had it, then lost the football, and Oregon will have it. First and 10 at the Cougar 29 yard line. Marshall was wide open over, over the middle. Rippon got him the ball, but he couldn't hang on. You have to give the offensive line credit. They gave Rippon plenty of time to set back and pick out not only his primary receiver, but secondary and triary receiver. He finds Marshall, gets it. He loses it when the guy comes behind and strips him. 
Dan Wilkins comes behind and strips him. And Ed Holbert jumped on the loose football for the Ducks. We have it at the Cougar 29-yard line, so a big break for Oregon. Now with the football, 12.41 to go in the third quarter. Back and Cherry in the backfield. On first down, it goes to Cherry. The tailback, it's two yards. Out to the Cougar, maybe the 27. Eric Howard on the stop for the Cougars. Cougar bench, you can see the background, Mark Griffin on the headphones. Upstairs to the press box to get a better idea what the Ducks defense was doing, especially on that last play. They was able to get the pass off, uncompleted pass off to John Marshall. Would have been a first down. Gain of one. It is second down and nine for the Ducks. Drew Bynes into the ball game, wide to the near side. Up the middle, Alex Mack, the big pull back, and he's out to the Cougar 23. Lee Blakeney on the stop for Washington State. Eight of six. They're down and three. Cherry. The eye in motion to the near side is Barnes. The pitch out goes to Cherry. Turning the left side and he's got the first down. He's all the way out to the Cougar 14 yard line. What's the first down for the Ducks? Owen Chappelle on the tackle for Washington State. It's the first down for Oregon. From the high formations, the pitch out sweep. And these, all these backs we've seen today do a good job but when they see the hold, squaring their shoulders up and going upfield. Picking up the yard instead of running parallel to the line of scrimmage. And it didn't quite pick it up with the big block on Lee Blakeney, and that gave Cherry the room to get the first down. First and ten at the Cougar 14. 11.02 to go in the third quarter. Cougars lead 30 to 20 over the Ducks. Alex Mack. No running room at all, but a good job defensively by the Cougars. Brad Harrington lost his helmet, made the tackle. And Rico Tipton was also there to help out. Good job to stop Alex Mack. Ball is back at the Cougar 15 yard line. Second down. Rich Brooks, head coach of the Ducks, irons folded. Talking with his coaches up in the press box. Second down and 11 at the Cougar 15. A whole bunch of yards. Gerald Waters on the tackle, but not a lot of running room for the fullback again. Alex Mack on the carry. Picks up maybe three. The Cougars almost had a, a mix up in their defensive line coverage. They kept moving around. They were still moving when the ball was snapped. Luckily for them, the play was coming into the area they were moving. Cougars lead by 10. From the end zone camera, through the uprights. It is third down and eight. Miller in the pocket, passes off over the middle, incomplete. As Cherry had a chance to make that catch, but he couldn't hang on. It hit him right on the numbers. Lee Blakeney defending on the play, but Cherry was open over the middle. This, this is a delay route. You allow your receivers to go down the field and clear out everyone. You have your running back just delay and cut under the linebackers. Hopefully you hit him and catch the ball and make some room and run for some yards. This time it didn't happen. Miller drilled it right in there, but Cherry just couldn't make the catch. 9.40 to go in the third quarter. It is now fourth down and eight. And Matt McLeod will come on to try for the field goal. A 30-yard try. The kick by McLeod is up and over and it is good. And from 30 yards out, the field goal by Matt McLeod. And with 9.37 to go in the third period, our score. It's the Cougars 30 and the Ducks 23. We'll be back right after these messages. Well, 
a 30-yard field goal by Matt McLeod of Oregon, and the Dutch on the board first here in the third quarter. It's now the Cougars 30 and Oregon 23. The band for Washington State is Rick Trace, as you see Dean Otto, the kicker for the Ducks, getting ready to kick it away. Dean Otto from South Africa. And there's a look at Rick Chase, averaging 21 yards a kick return this year. And he had a couple of big catches in the first half of play when the Cougars led 30-20, to 20, but right now it's 30-23, a seven-point lead for Washington State. Leonardo is just about ready. And the kick. Chase moving to the near side, takes it at his one-yard line. Straight up field, it's down to 15. 20 out to the 23-yard line. Edmund Rivera downfield to make the tackle for the Ducks. And the Cougars have it first and 10. If I'm right, that's the first kickoff return they have been able to return. Uh, Otto's been kicking the ball out of his zone. That's the first one. Chase had a chance to run back. And he's right at his average. He got it at the one. Return of 22 yards out to the over 23. Out to the right is Marshall. Calvin and Mays in the backfield. In motion is Michael James. Looking the pitch out to Mays. 30, the 35, and down to the Cougar 36-yard line, and Ruben Mays picks up the first down for the Cougars before he's stopped by Dan Wilkin of the Ducks. The way this man's been running today, wow. it's, a, it's a veer route, it's a veer, the veer option, and the way he's been running today, it has put fear in the Oregon coaches and the players' mind every time he touched the ball. He squares his shoulders up and runs with so much power that it's hard to stop him when he gets his hands on the ball. And you know that the Ducks are looking for Mays to take that pitch, and it boils down to execution, getting the blocks and getting the room, and Mays a great job to run the football. This time, out to the 44-yard line, goes Richard Calvin, Wilkin, and Doug Judge on the tackle, along with Don Pelham. Richard Calvin brings the Cougars out to their own 44-yard line. With the success that Mays wow. is having, you give it to your fullback, let him run a little bit. A little bit to keep everyone honest, and it makes the fullback's job a little easier because everyone's looking for Mays. He can pick up some yardage. And Calvin is close to the first down. Rob Marshall into the ball game defensively. Culp is out of there. Second down and about a half a yard. Calvin has the first down. Richard Calvin just his head down, plows over the right side of the line behind Kirk Samuelson and Mike Dreyer. Well, he spot the football back at the 48-yard line. That's where they needed to go for the first down. It looked like Calvin got a lot more than that. Young fan here at Watson Stadium this afternoon. Michael James, end of the ball game, wide to the near side. They got the first down. First and ten for the Cougars. Lifting in trouble, and he is sacked. Back at his 40-yard line, Todd Welch is in there. The linebacker to get a hold of Mark Ripon. Lost back to the Cougar 40-yard line, a loss of eight yards on the play. Yes, he just beats Jamie White on this play. The linebacker comes from the outside and dogs. He beats Jamie White to tackle. He's in there before Ripon can set up and find the receiver. First time in the ball game that Mark Ripon has been sacked by the Duck defense. And it's now second down and 18. Hayes over the middle and Ruben across the 45 and doesn't quite get back to the original line of scrimmage a pickup of about seven Todd Welch and Bob Huditz there in the stop for the Ducks Ruben Mays with over 200 yards on the day that's the third time this year that Ruben has gained over 200 yards in a single ball game I guess you could call him a duck buster today, huh? Who do you, you call him? <laughs> duck buster. That's good. Ruben Mays is the main duck buster. Over 200 yards today. 197 in the first half. It is second down and seven, a gain of three by Mays. Walt the Cougar, 47. Griffin to put it up. Open in the flats, but he can't get it to Richard Calvin coming out of the backfield. Calvin was wide open across the 50. Deep downfield was Michael James. Michael James is wide open down there. 
They may come back with that play next time. I saw the coaches, the Cougar coaches, pointing to James after the play was over with. So they may come back with that, maybe the next series or the series after. Ben Harper back to punt. Michael James is all the way down to the Duck 20-yard line. Catching the cold. High kick. The catch being called for by Lou Barnes, and it's first and ten for the Ducks at their own 20-yard line. So just kind of put that one in the back of your mind on that last play where Michael James was open deep downfield. But Rippin had a chance to get the first down, but he just couldn't get the ball to Richard Calvin. Man's wearing the parkas and the down jackets, the caps and the umbrellas. Right now the umbrella's not out. It's not raining. Was quite a bit in the first half. 30 to 23. The Cougars lead the Ducks with 6.40 to go here in the third period. Rick Rears along with Paul Johns. Glad you could join us for the play-by-play -play this afternoon. The handoff. I believe it is Mack, Alex Mack. And he's out. The flag is thrown. Take it, Tony Cherry on the carry. Cherry out to the 25-yard line. Eric Howard on the tackle, but a flag is thrown. The temper's flying, and I believe the coaches, I mean the referees, caught the, the last push against Washington State. So the Cougars charge for the personal foul. And that'll bring the Ducks downfield to their own 40-yard line. I don't, I don't know why it is, but referees always see the second push. Oh, just about all the time. Cougars had only one penalty for only five yards in the first half. The Ducks had three for 15 yards. There's a big one chucked up against the Cougars here in the second half. 6.23 to go in the period. Third quarter. First down for the Ducks out of the eye formation. Tony Cherry. With waters on his back, he gets across midfield all the way down to the Cougar 47-yard line. Gerald Waters on the tackle, but Cherry carried him about seven yards. <laughs> yes, he did. He went for a piggyback ride on that. That shows the power walk, uh, Cherry has in his legs. Yeah. Nice run by Tony Cherry. Came into the ballgame with 302 yards rushing for the years. One heck of an average, 6.6 .6 yards per carry. Very good average. First and 10 for the Ducks. The pitch out goes to Cherry, a little behind him, but he handles it. And he is hit hard at the Cougar 45 and driven out of bounds by Lee Blakeney. Blakeney getting close to 500 career tackles. He'll get that easily. He came into the ball again with 470 career tackles. So you look at Tony Cherry going back to the duck huddle. University of Oregon has produced some outstanding NFL players. Bobby Moore. Now Ahmad Rashad. Now, Ahmad Rashad. How about Dan Fouts? Yeah. Chargers. Yeah. right here in the early 70s. Yeah. Right. Uh, Upside the 40. 35 and he's down at the Cooper. 33 yard run. Another first down for the Ducks. Tony Cherry tackled by Rico Tipton. He broke two tackles on that play. Tony Cherry. Career tackles. So you look at Tony Cherry and back to the University of Oregon. Splitting belt players. Bobby Moore. Oh, yeah. Ahmad Rashad. Yeah, Ahmad Rashad. How about Dan Fouts? tackles on that play. Tony Cherry did a good job, Paul, in yes. the, replace, the replacement of the injured Kevin McCall. The, ball, the play was initially supposed to go to the inside, but because there was no room, he popped it to the outside and picked up good yardage. So Cherry filling in very nicely for the injured McCall. First and ten for the Ducks at the Cougar 33. Cherry again, and he gets to the Cougar 30. Oh, he's tackled by Rod Cleveland. I guess, I guess that philosophy of why change a good thing. Go with Cherry until you stop him, then we'll go to someone else. 
just down the other side of the 30-yard line as you take a look at the Oregon cheerleaders. Quarterback Chris Miller inside the duck huddle. And right now, the Ducks fell by only seven points. Our, our score, 30 to 23, Washington State. Lou Barnes wide to the right side. Second down and six. And he is tackled by Blakeney. And Jeff Lomas right there to meet Alex Mack. Nice stop by Lee Blakeney, the all-time leading tackler in Cougar history. Watch this smack right here. Very good job. They try to go to watch the stage play, bro. Run the draw play, but Blakeney's there and smells it out and stops it for little or no gain. They're down and three for the Ducks. Over the middle, he's got Sherry, then he fumbles the football, and it's going to be ruled incomplete. Throw the Cherry just in half possession. Lee Blakeney is there, defending on the play, along with Jim Kukowski. They try to run a little back, back out of the backfield, delay route again. But Blakeney smells it out, and he's on top of the play. Very good play by Blakeney. Thought for a second, from our angle, that Cherry may have held on, but or long enough for the possession, but never really did have possession. Fourth down and three. The field goal drive by McLeod, and the kick is up, and it is good! From 44 yards out, Mac McLeod, a field goal, and with 4.02 left to go in the third quarter, it's now the Cougars 30. And the Ducks 26, and this is one interesting ball game, Paul. Yes, this constantly chipping away at that lead. It's now four points. Flag is thrown at the Cougar 32 yard line and the penalty will go against Washington State and the field goal is good. So a 44 yard field goal by Matt McLeod. 4.02 left to go. On the clock you see the score only a four point lead now for the Cougars who led 21 to 6 after the first quarter and at halftime they had a 10 point 30 to 20 lead. So right down the Cougar, Cougars need to get it going offensively to try to increase that margin it's only a four point lead. They're going to have to get something going this quarter they haven't been able to get a, a drive going and the and the Oregon State, Oregon Ducks have been able to just chip away at the lead. They've had two good drives now. Duck cheerleaders have been something to yell about here in the second half anyway as two Matt McLeod field goals pulls the Ducks to within four. And it's been the second half where the Cougars have been doing all their damage offensively this year. Looking at the score by quarters this season, the Cougars with 34 in the third period and 87 points in the fourth period. Especially marking those games the last three weeks against USC, UCLA and that unbelievable come from behind win last week at Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto against the Cardinal winning 49-42 after being down 42-14. Well the penalty against Washington State will be tacked out on the kick here by Dean Otto. Good job by Cherry running the football in that drive for Oregon. Ball is teed up at the Cougar 45. Junior Tattletowski, one of the deep men for the Cougars. He has to be careful here because if he kicks it straight out of the end zone, the ball would go to the 30 rather than the 20. The onside kick and it's covered nicely by Gerald Waters. Great job by Waters. The ball came right to him and now tempers are really flaring down on the field. The Ducks downfield quickly but Waters just simply Pounced on the football and a good job to bring it in and keep it right there. And the Cougars have good field position at their own 34. Watch water. We saw in practice yesterday where Otto was having trouble kicking an onside ball and making it bounce. Uh, the head coach was trying to show him how to do it. <laughs> the ball just didn't bounce. It just skidded along the ground and that's not a very good onside kick. First and ten for the Cougars at their own 34. Need to get something going here in the second half, leading 30 to 26. Almost intercepted by Don Pelham, the linebacker. 
Cullen bobbled the football and didn't hang on. I believe it was Jamie Olsen trying, the intended receiver trying to get to the football, but Cullen was out in front of him. Mark Rippert follows, follows the tight end all the way from the line of scrimmage, and he telegraphed that ball. Then he tried to force it in there. It wasn't a very good throw at all. Second down at 10, Jamie Olsen shot at a tight end for the injured Vince Layton. But the ball never got there. Pitch out to Mays. 40, 45, 50, Ruby Mays on the carry. He's got the first down for the Cougars before Don Judge makes the stop for the Ducks. This Ruben Mays lost his shoe, but he's got the first down. This is a count, this is the counter option. They fake to one side and then they come back to that side. Give the ball to the man you know is gonna get some yards. That's a great block, block. by Kirk Samuelson. Great block to allow to allow May to pick up some more yards. Samuel Sim, the offensive right guard, 6'4", 256, paving the way for Ruben Mays. First and ten, right at midfield for the Cougars. Motion to the near side is Breland ripped in, keeps the football, and he gets down to the Ducks, spins away, still on his feet, the 30, and down to the Ducks, 24-yard line, and what a run by Mark Rippin, the tackle by Todd Welch and Ed Homer. he shed it about four tacklers. That's what... That's one of the few times today he's kept the ball. But he's a big, strong running back, and everybody thinks he's gonna, gonna pitch it out. He keeps it, and no one wraps up. Look at that. Samuelson is a good, does a good job by keep blocking and doesn't allow anyone to just get good contact with him. And uh, Rippin's gonna challenge the tackle. Instead of going to slide, he runs and challenges him. That's a good job. That's one of the best runs of the afternoon by either side. First and 10 for the Cougars. At the Oregon. 24-yard line. Ruben Mays across the 20, and he is down at the duck 19. Wendell Kaysen and Bob Hewitt's combined on the tackle. Ruben Mays, one over 200 yards. It's a dive play, and you can, and you can see his ball is supposed to go inside, but he just goes to the outside. Off tackle play, picks up some good yards. Picked up five, and his second down and five for the Cougars. Marching downfield. The chase is wide to the far side in motion. Goes James and it's Ruben Mays. Mays the 10 across the 10. First and goal for the Cougars inside the Duck 10 yard line. He is amazing, Ruben Mays. He's picking up yardage that he's not supposed to pick up. He was he was clearly supposed to be stopped on that play. He puts his head down and shoulders and breaks some tackles and then loses some in. Bounces off that's two, a, three people right there. That's a great run right there. He dives for four, five, four yards. yards. 209 to go here in the third quarter. The Cougars lead 30 to 26, well within the range. The field goal range of John Trout, but with a running of Mike Griffin and Ruben Mays, a chance to put seven up on the board. <laughs> Split backs, Mays and Calvin. And it's Richard Calvin. Richard Calvin, touchdown Cougars! Counter trap, they, they fake the pitch to Mays and come back with a trap to Calvin. And it's a, it's a wide, the hole is wide open and stays on his feet and goes in for the score. Nine yard touchdown run by Richard Calvin. Nothing fancy, just over the left side and behind the block of Samuelson. Samuelson gets away from a tackler, spins away and gets inside the end zone for the Cougars score. 36 to 26, the Cougars back out to a 10 point lead, but John Trout is in there to try for the extra point. That was a much needed drive. A seven point lead, excuse me. Now the kick, and it is good. No doubt about it. And with 1.51 to go in the third quarter, our score, it's the Cougars within the range. The field goal range of John Trout, but with a running of Mark Griffin and Ruben Mays, a chance to put seven up on the board. <laughs> Split backs, Mays and Calvin. And it's Richard Calvin. Richard Calvin, touchdown Cougars! Counter trap, they, they fake the pitch to Mays and come back with a trap to Calvin. And it's a, it's a wide, the hole is wide open and stays on his feet and goes in for the score. Nine yard touchdown run by Richard Calvin. Nothing fancy, just over the left side and behind the block. Samuelson. Samuelson gets away from a tackler, spins away and gets inside the end zone for the Cougars scoring. 36 to 26, the Cougars back out to a 10 point lead. And John Trout is an eight to the Yes, it is. Oh.
Yo Jao on the left. Two guys. Three and four overall, that would even up his record on the season. So far today, Mays has 24 carries for 232 yards. Oh. <laughs> I think he's doing a pretty good job today. Not bad. Not 216 bad. yards last week. His third 200 yards game of the season. Big by Trout. And it's still the third quarter. Tony Cherry at his four. Upfield, the 15 to 20. Breaks away! The 40, and he is down at the 45-yard line, lost the football, but he is called down. I believe, no, it's recovered by Washington State. Gerald Waters made the hit, and it's recovered by the Cougars. Big break for Washington State, the fumble. Every, every time Trout kicks a short kick, is you have a good return by Cherry, and look at that wall in front of him. That's great blocking. And it's a good tackle. The ball is stripped for him before he hits the ground. Good call by the referee. And it's recovered by Ron Collins. He came up with the big plays <laughs> last week. It comes up with a mighty big one right here, and the Cougars offense is right back on the field. First and ten at the duck. 47-yard line. Pippen has Chase open in the flats. He gets the ball to him. Chase is down at the Oregon 41-yard line. Trying to put on a move. He slipped a little bit. Lost his footing. Todd Walsh on the tackle. That looked kind of like a late developing play. They had, they had Chase on there for the, for the off outlet receiver. He looked like he was going to go deep first. Then he didn't have a deep receiver, so he threw it to Chase. And he knew he had Rick Chase wide open. Wanted, wanted to take a look downfield one more time. Exactly. You can see what that slippery turf does. He couldn't get his feet on him to go and get any more yards. A gain of six. Second down and four at the Oregon 41-yard line. Up the middle, Ruben Mays. He's got the first down and a lot more. All the way down to the Oregon 20-yard line. That man is something else. Doug Judge on the tackle, and Ruben Mays may end up with 300 yards before this day is over. 55 seconds remain in the third quarter. Watch Ruben Mays run. Just a straight dive play over the tackle. <laughs> Not only is he powerful, but he's showing some uh, nimble feet oh. there. All the way down to the Oregon 21-yard line. He had 861 yards coming into the afternoon's game. 253 yards, 25 carries, and a couple of touchdowns, including a 70-yard run. Rippin keeps the ball himself, and he's out to the Oregon 15-yard line, tripped up by Dale Thorny, the defensive left end. He was lead 37 to 26. Jamie Olson checks in with head coach Jim Walden, and now Michael James in there along with Rick Chase. Will Stepanovich is in there defensively for the Ducks. And time running down. It looks like we're going to go to the fourth quarter without another play being snapped off. And that's the end of the third quarter. Our score after three periods of play, what a ball game. It's the Cougars, 37, and the Ducks, 26. We'll be back right after these messages. I'm laughing, but I hate you said that. <laughs> Fourth quarter getting underway. 37 to 26. The Cougars leave the Ducks. Second down and five for the Cougars at the Oregon 17-yard line. It's Ruben Mays, the man of the day, gets the carry it out to the Duck 12-yard line before he stopped by Todd Welch. Ruben Mays with over 250 yards running the football, a shot at 300 yards today with 14.45. Now to go in the football game. Looks like this man gets stronger every time, every, as the game goes on, he gets stronger. That's what he did last week in that win against Stanford. Kept right on going. We're down and one for the Cougars. Griffin keeps himself. 
going to be close. Oh. Todd Walsh again is there to make the tackle for the Ducks. And they will have to bring the chains out to see, maybe not, see whether or not Rippon got the first down. And now officials time out, and they will measure it. Looks to me like he's short. Fourth quarter, a look at the crowd here at Autzen Stadium this afternoon. Head coach Rich Brooks. Maybe short by a credit card. No, let the football. So it'll be fourth and less than a yard for the Cougars. Yeah, Washington State will go for it. Mark Griffin stays in the ball game. Checking in with a play from the sideline is Michael James. I wonder who they'll give it to. Oh, I'll take a guess and <laughs> say maybe Ruben Mays. Ron Zeff into the ball game defensively at middle linebacker. Or as an extra linebacker. For the Ducks. Here we go. It is fourth down and less than a yard. Mark Griffin. To Ruben Mays. Mays the five. <laughs> Touchdown, Washington State. It's Ruben Mays. They did it fourth at about the length of a football, and they go all the way for the score. The Cougars are back up on the board, and Ruby Mays, his third touchdown of the day. Rich, Richard Calvin did a great job of faking like he had the ball. He jumps into the line of scrimmage, which pulls about four people, and just pitched the ball to Mays and let him run. Surprised me, though. I thought, I thought they were going to give it to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby Mays, the touchdown, and now Trout. For the extra point. Staff from center and the kick is up and it is good. And with 13 minutes and 49 seconds left to go in the ball game, our score, it's the Cougars, 44, and the Ducks, 26. Boy, this game is turned around in a matter of minutes. Once again, the touchdown run of Ruben May. As you see the fake by Calvin, a jump in line of scrimmage like he had the ball. A quick pitch to Mays. And he's home free. Great block on the outside by Jamie Olson. That gave him the room he needed. And yes, he after did. that, he was wide open. We, we've, been, yard run. we've been talking about how good Ruben is running, but we have to give extra credit to the people that are blocking for him because as we've seen, there have been some outstanding blocks that have allowed him to have some room. You bet. People like Jamie White and Dan Lynch, Kurt Ladinas, Kirk Samuelson, Mike Dreyer, and Jamie Olson along the offensive front line that have given Mays the room to run all day long. Ruben Mays with his third touchdown he had five last week. Has he been something? So far he has 27 carries for 286 yards and three touchdowns. And Ruben Mays now with 11 touchdowns this year. Last week against Stanford, he had the five. And Mays now with 13 touchdown in his Cougar career. What a year. So Ruben Mays went into the ball game. So take a look at the deep man, Anthony Newman. Mays came into the ball game, the fifth lead rusher in the nation. Low kick. It'll skitter out to Cherry at the six. Upfield at 20, 20. Oh, brothers, he hit. But at the 22-yard line, he is hit by Ted Warnduff, a defensive back. He put the stick on Tony Cherry. Yes, he did. That's one way to stop a long return. Ducks, first and 10 at the 21-yard line. Fans here at Austin Stadium. A little on the damp side with the rain earlier today. Kevin McCall is back there. And his tailback spot came off the field with an injured knee earlier in the third quarter. Chris Miller, scrambling, rolling to his right. Pass off, and it's going to be complete to his tight end, Doug Herman, and he is back out of bounds at the Duck 27-yard line. Knocked out of bounds by Rico Tipton. Thirteen thirty-five left to go in the ballgame. And the Cougars lead 44 to 26. First. Second down for the Ducks. Second down and five. The call. 
across the 30. And he gets out to the Oregon 33-yard line before he's hit by Lee Blakeney. So it looks like Kevin McCall is all right when he put off the field. Looks like it looked like he had suffered a pretty good look like I, I may have just gotten, like I say, hit on top of the knee, right over the knee and bruised a muscle or had a frog in a muscle. In, in any event, he's back out there, which is which is good news for good, good news for everybody concerned. From the end zone camera and behind the Oregon offense. Miller in trouble, but he's able to get the pass off to his fullback, Mac. But Alex is taken down by Jeff Doolin at the Oregon 35-yard line. Nice job by Miller to get rid of the football with two Cougars hanging on. Yes, that was, that was an excellent job by Miller. He, he rolls out, and it's a great rush. He just gets the ball away. Good heads up play. Jim Kukowski has him around the waist, but he's able to get the pass off to Mack, and then Jeff Doolin is there to make the tackle. Eight of two, second down and eight for the Ducks at their own 35-yard line. Here's sideline and open is Holman, the split end, and he's high bound. Got the football, but he cannot stay in bounds. He had enough for the first down, but Jeff Doolin defending on the play, but Holman does not stay in bounds. Third down and eight. Cougars with a touchdown here in the fourth and final period, an 11-yard run by Ruben Mays to make it 44-26 Cougars. We haven't heard much of Lou Barnes this half. Oh, we haven't. Similar to last week's game. Miller scrambling. Has the first down. Cross midfield, the 40, and run out of bounds by Cedric Brown at the Cougar 35-yard line, and a big gainer by sophomore quarterback Chris Miller. Ricky Reynolds and Cedric Brown both are there to run Miller out of bounds. And just, just as I was saying that I saw Lou Barnes come across the middle. He looked like he was open, but Miller was flushed out of the pocket, and he made a, he did a good job. As we see again, he looks like he's open, but Miller does a good job of setting up his blocks and picking up yards. Look at that tightrope that sideline. First and ten for the Ducks. Out of the Cougar 37-yard line. Pass to the far sideline, and it is incomplete. Set it for split end Scott Holman. Getting back to finish up at the thought, you mentioned Lou Barnes, and the Cougar defense doing a good eye of keeping Lou Barnes in check. Did the same thing last week against the leading pass receiver for the Stanford Cardinal, Emil Harry. That's right. They have done a good job in, in stopping their primary receiver for the op opposing team, which causes the offense to go to another receiver. So the other receivers have to pick up the slack. In the last two weeks so far, they haven't been able to do it. Second down and 10 for the Ducks. Over the middle, complete to the tight end, Herman. Has it, and he gets down to the Cougar 24-yard line. And that'll be a first down for Oregon. Tackled by Jim Krakowski. The fans here at Stadium. The umbrellas are out. There's the pass completion. This is a play where the line, where the tight end just steps back like he's blocking, and once the once the linebacker's flush out, he just releases inside. Quarterback pops him with a quick pass and picks up a first down. First and ten for the Ducks at the Cougar 24. Downfield over the middle and open. It's Barnes and Barnes. It's all the way down to the Cougar two-yard line. And there's Lou Barnes, the big play man for the Oregon Ducks. Miller had plenty of time to set back in the pocket. He had plenty of time. It, he didn't have any, any chance of anybody coming to sack him. He gets to see everything that's going on. And he throws a beautiful snap pass to Lou Barnes. The gain right there as Gerald Waters and Ricky Reynolds in on the tackle. But now it's first and goal for the Ducks. All the way down to the Cougar. Three-yard line. Nice catch by Lou Barnes. Miller. Scrambling. And he is knocked down at the Cougar five-yard line. A referee just got hit. Dad Harrington made the stop, and a referee was 
Then a knockdown on the play, and he is on his back, and hopefully he'll be all right. Take a pretty good shot. Miller rolling to his left, looking for somebody open in the end zone. Has to scramble. Jim Krakowski almost gets to him. Here comes the hit on Miller by Harrington. It just flattens him to the five, and now the referee is hit here by Jeff Dulham. And whoa, got him right on the side of the knee. Oh, wow. Jeff Dulham came out to try to put the stop finishing touches on Miller. The referee took a hit from the side. Yes, he got hit right on the knee. And that knee gets caught and he can't bend it. Right. That hurts the lip. <laughs> now the referee is up. That is okay. And he'll sore for a while. He'll be sore tomorrow. Once it cools down, he'll be sore. A light rain falling. To the cheerleaders. Cougars leading 44 to 26 with 11 minutes to go in the ball game. But the Ducks have the football down at the Cougar four-yard line. And a second down for Oregon. Rolling to his right. A good rush. Pass off of the end zone. Diving Barnes and he can't get to it. Little Barnes diving out of the end zone. That's the man that Chris Miller wants to look for it when he's in trouble. Why not go to your favorite receiver when you want to get when you want to get a score? You need something big to happen. Chris Miller in the first half was seven of fourteen for one hundred and eight yards. I like the way he throws the football. Only a sophomore. He's going to mean a lot to the Ducks offense the next two years here. He throws the ball with a lot of authority. Third and goal at the Cougar three-yard line. Motion lines. Sets back the other way. The handoff goes. Touchdown. Todd Tony Cherry. On the touchdown for the Ducks. And it's now 44-32. Washington State. Three-yard touchdown run by Tony Cherry. Wasn't sure exactly who had the football, but it's Tony Cherry into the ball game. Follow your lead blocker. And there's a very nice hole there. Why not give it to him? He's been picking up nice yards every time he's touched the ball. Picks up a three-yard game for a touchdown. That's his second touchdown of the season for Tony Cherry. And they will go for the two-point try. Over the middle, and it's going to be a big, does he hang on? And yes, he does. They get the two-point conversion. Barn. Is that Barn? Our score, 10.42 left to go in the ball game. It's the Cougars, 44, the Ducks, 34, and we'll be back right after these messages. Game our score the Cougars 44 and the Ducks 34. A three yard touchdown run by Todd Cherry, and it was Todd Cherry who caught the two point conversion pass from Chris Miller. And it's a 10 point ball game. The win pick it up here at Autzen Stadium. Drive of 79 yards for the Ducks on 11 plays. That last scoring drive for Oregon, and they did it in three minutes and two seconds. Junior Tanelatowski, one of the deep men, along with Ruben Mays, for the Cougars. I wonder, if, I wonder if they would try an onside kick here. Dean Otto getting ready to tee up the football at the 40-yard line. Now that Coach Rich Brooks. Not only do you want to keep it out of offensive hands, but you want to keep it out of Ruben Mays. 
that would be theirs is coming over to the near side line, the Cougar bench. Rich Brooks, a few words with one of the officials, and Ruben Bays and Tano Atasi will head back as the deep men at their own 10 yard line. Looks like the Cougars are ready for something here. They got five on the front, six yards deep, they have four, and then it's Tano Atasi and Mays back at the 10. 10.42 to go into the ball game, and the kick is away, and it's going to go to Ruben Mays at its 12 yard line. The 20, Mays picks his way down to the Cougar 30 yard line. Boy, had he not lost his footing on that one, he may have picked, he may have picked up a little more yards. And, and who did they kick it to? <laughs> Ruben Mays. Here's where Mays is so talented. He just knows exactly where to go. He finds his blocking, picks the holes, heads on through, has a quick acceleration. First and 10 for the Cougars at their own 29-yard line. He doesn't seem to be any, in any kind of hurry when he's running the ball. Hey, boy, he's running back. <laughs> Hayes over the middle. Another big game. All the way out to the Cougar 41-yard line. And has a first down. Picks up 11 yards on that carry like it was nothing. Dan Wilkin on the stop. Watch how easy. Ruben Mays just goes right up the middle. And look at the hole. Yes, that's what makes it look easy, yeah. too. The hole. <laughs> 29 carries, 297 yards, and three touchdowns. He is going to go over 300 yards easily. Over 10 minutes to go in the ball game, 297 yards. You think he'll go over 300? Oh, on this next play, maybe. First and 10. Picked up 12 yards on that last play. I was right. The 50, 45, and the 40. Ruby Bays over 300 yards on the afternoon, all the way down to the Duck 32 yard line. I guess, Holy I guess smoke. Right. Oh my goodness. It's Ruben Mays. This is the Ruben Mays show today. He is amazing. Look at that hole. The offensive line giving Ruben Mays so much room to work with. And Ruben Mays taking advantage of the room. And he has scampered well over 300 yards. First and 10 for the Cougars all the way down to the Duck 32 yard line. And that man has been brilliant. Ruben Mays. We're going to have to check before we get off the broadcast whether or not that's a Cougar record for the most yards in a single ball game. Well, now there's about 320 yards rushing. Calvin out to the 30. He picks up about two and a half yards. And the Cougars steadily all afternoon long, Paul, have been moving the football. It seems like every time Ruben doesn't get the ball, you can hear the fans give a, a sigh of relief. You know? Tony Grossi on the tackle for the Ducks, Calvin, over to the bench. Some of the fans here at Austin Stadium. Gain of two, second down and eight. Just across the Duck 30 yard line. Motion is Marshall. The pitch out, Ruben Mays. And Mays is taken out of bounds by Doug Judge at the 26. Doug Judge, big strong safety for the Ducks. There he is. Knee surgery last year, it looks like he is just fine. The Cougar offensive line has been keeping him in check so far most of the game. But they have been keeping everybody in check most of the game. Yes. Third down and four. to 25 and that is it. Down up for the first down. Bob Hewitt and Tom Welch on the tackle. Good job. Good job by the Ducks defense then. They forced the play. Come in and make the tackle before Ripon can make the pitch out. John Trout will come on to try for the field goal attempt. Ball will be spotted at the 31 and try of 41 yards for John Trout. He can do it. All set up on the near hash mark. So Trout, 
right footed kicker has a good angle on it. Snap from center, the kick is up, low line drive, it has enough distance, and it is good. Line drive through the uprights, and it's a 41-yard field goal by John Trout, and with 8.05 to go in the ball game, it's the Cougars, 47, and the Ducks, 34. What a ball game. There you see the score. That was a big field goal. So now it's, now the Ducks have to score two touchdowns to win this game, rather than touchdown and a field goal to tie it. They have to score two to win. Won't be enough. So the Cougars back on the board with three more points. They had 49 points in last week's game against Stanford as you look at the kick by John Trout. They are lucky to get this ball up because it just missed one of the onrushers' hands. There's a line drive. Looked like a white Wilhelm knuckleball going through the uprights. But it's good. Trout with a field goal, John had a 26-yard field goal with 15 seconds to go in the first half. That made it a 30-20 to 20 score as both teams retired to the locker rooms. And now a 41-yard field goal to make it 47 to 34. Washington State and the Cougars looking forward to hoping to get their second Pac-10 one of the year. Low line drive, takes a bounce at the 25, rolls out to Tony Cherry, bobbles the football, it's got it at 5 to 10, the 15 to 20. 45, lot of room, far sideline 40, cuts back off to midfield, spins away, still on his feet, now he's down, all the way to the Cougar 48 yard line, outstanding run by Tony Cherry, finally stopped by Ron Collins of the Cougars. This return is really hard to believe. They do what they want to do, square, but you have three men there ready to make the tackle. He runs between all of them. Breaks a couple of tackles there, and then it's Collins who makes the tackle, but not before Cherry gets all the way down to the Cougar 48. That's a 48 yard return. So just like that, the, Coug the uh, Ducks with good field position, 7.56 to go on the ball game. There's Miller in there all the way for the Ducks this afternoon. Over the middle, deep downfield. He's got Barnes at 25, 20, and out of bounds at the Cougars 12 yard line. And just like that, flags are thrown out of the field now. And it looks like a personal foul penalty against the Cougars. All the way down to the Cougar 12 yard line, and just like that, Oregon right back. The, the offensive line does a good job allowing Miller to set up. Barnes just comes across the field from the right side, it comes all the way over to the left side, it's a perfect pass. They call a real unnecessary roughness penalty on the secondary. I think on Jeff Newland who came across on the extra hit after Barnes was well out of bounds. Taken out of bounds by Waters. That was a 36 yard pass. Let's see, the referee is all over the ball game. He was injured. That would be Gordon Reese. So it looks like we're minus the referee in the ballgame call. Personal foul against the Cougars. That brings the Ducks all the way down to the Cougar six-yard line where it's first and goal for the Ducks and the rain coming down again. Right when we mentioned we haven't heard from the ball. The last few drives, he, comes, he must have heard us. <laughs> Right over the middle, and the pass was right on the money from Chris Miller. And he can run the football. First and goal for the Ducks at the Cougar 6. Officials still with a few things to talk over. As they make sure they get it straight on the penalty on the yardage. It's exactly where it's going to be stepped off as you look at head coach Jim Walden. One special teams play. One offensive pass play, the Ducks are on the 11-yard line, Cougars. Line 48-yard punt return by Jerry, then the pass completion to Barnes, and then the personal foul against the Cougars. First and goal for the Ducks. 7.48 on the clock. Back, the fullback, to the 5, and maybe the 4-yard line. Alex Mack tackled by Lee Blakeney. 6'1", 228 pounds, senior linebacker. There's the hit by Blakeney. Straightens him up and makes the tackle. Second and goal at the Cougar 5. Out of the eye. Pass to the end zone. Barnes leaping up and he can't get 
get to it. Took the ball with him out of bounds, trying for that Hail Mary pass by Chris Miller. That was the same type of pass play Barnes scored on in the first half. This time it didn't work. So it's a fade route. They catch him in a man-to-man -man defense, so it's just a quick fade route. Barnes does one heck of a job going up. He almost comes down with that ball. Ruben Mays with his over 300 yards rushing this afternoon has set a Cougar record today. The old record was 261 yards. Third down. All the Ducks at the five and the handoff goes to Cherry. Right up the middle and he is down at the one yard line. Tony Cherry in there for the injured Kevin McCall. Wow, let's see how close he got. It was first and goal at the one yard line. He got it up for the first down. Let him slide all the way to the goal line. He'll get back. It's first and goal for the Ducks. 47-34. Cougars lead the football game with 6.50 to go. And it goes to Cherry. He is hit in the backfield and loses maybe a half yard to a yard. Quick hit. Milford Hodge. In there. Goal. And back the fullback. Does he get in? No, he is stopped. Inside the one yard line. So the Cougar defense hanging on. And they stop Alex Mack. It is third down for the Ducks. One thing to also think about, as long as they can keep this goal line stand going, more time runs off the clock. Brent White on the tackle for Washington State. Those are the football right at the goal line. It is third down. Cherry, and he won't get in! Tony Cherry is driven back to about the three-yard line. Big defensive play by the Cougars. Jerry trying to go to the right side is tripped up by one of his own teammates. There is Cedric Brown to make the stop. And he nails Tony Cherry and timeout is called. It is fourth down. Hey, trying to see where they spot the football as quarterback Chris Miller goes to the far sideline to talk things over with Rich Brooks and what a job defensively by the Cougars. Hey Jack, this is one of the few times today we've seen that the Cougar defense control the line of scrimmage and, and what better time to do it than on the goal line. Saw the time, 5.27 to score, 47-34, Cougars lead. The Ducks trying to punch it in with Alex Mack and Todd Cherry on three tries. They were first and goal at the one yard line and now they are fourth and goal. I wouldn't be surprised if they went to Lou Barnes on this on this play. Field goal. He's in the game. A field goal makes it a 10 point ball game, but Chris Miller gets back inside the huddle. They're gonna go for the six pointer. And the ball is at the two yard line. Fourth and goal at the two. in the end zone, touchdown Oregon, but flags all over the place in the end zone. Tony Cherry got it in there from two yards out, but we have to wait and see what the official call is going to be. That will be a touchdown. The call will go against Washington State. So a two-yard run by Cherry. Makes it a 47 to 40 ball game. But now they will set up for the extra point. They try for the extra point that would make it 47 41. There's Tony Cherry, the two yard touchdown run with 524 remaining. Matt McLeod with Drive for the extra point attempt held by the quarterback, Chris Miller. 
Keep your eye on Miller right here. No, the kick is away by McLeod, and it is good. So at 5.24 to go in the ball game, it's Washington State 47 and the Ducks 41, and we've got ourselves a rock'em, sock'em, pier six ball in the rain here at Austin Stadium this afternoon. Unbelievable, Paul Johns. These two clubs have really gone at it. Like two heavyweights. Yes, they have. It's been an exciting game. I guess when you have cold weather, it's good for the fans to have a game like this, as I said once before. It's not too good for the coaches who have to stand and watch this type of game, though. I have a feeling they may go for the onside kick this time. A six-point Cougar lead after the two-yard touchdown run by Tony Cherry. Good job by Gerald Waters the last time on Dean Otto's onside kick attempt to smother the football, and the Cougars had it. And brought it down for a score. 41-yard field goal attempt by John Trott. 48-yard touchdown drive by the Ducks in eight plays. Two minutes and 32 seconds. Chipped away on the clock. A little less than five and a half minutes to go. Cougar Mays and Junior Tuttle and are the deep end for the Cougars. The penalty will be tacked on onto the kick. And Otto will tee it up at the Cougar 45-yard line. So you have to look for the onside kick right here. I know everybody is ready up front for Washington State. Otto is ready. Now the shift. There's the onside kick. And it goes 10 yards, and it's covered nicely. At the Cougar 34-yard line, John... Is it Waters or John Marshall? And Brooks, Rich Brooks. Good job to get on the onside kick. That was a little better onside kick, but it doesn't get that, that high hop you wanted to get. Again, Gerald Waters. Good job by Gerald Waters. The cover of football. First and ten for the Cougars at their own 34-yard line. And the fans for the Ducks making a lot of noise right here at Austin Stadium. 5.23 to go in the ball game. In motion to the near side is Marshall. The handoff goes to who else? Ruben Mays over the left side of the line. He's out to the 40. Rob Marshall on the stop. Once again, getting back to Ruben Mays, he has set an all-time Washington State Cougar rushing record with his total this afternoon. He is well over 300 yards today. The old record was 261 yards by Bernard Jackson against the Oregon Ducks back in 1971. We've got an injured player down on the field. But Ruben Mays has just blown that record right out of the water. Again, an official down. We had Gordon Reese injured, and he is out of the ball game. The referee looked at Ruben Mays. 334 yards, 32 carries, three touchdowns. He had 216 yards last week. That looks like nothing compared to what he had today, but he had the five touchdowns. You think he'll try to go over 400 yards today? <laughs> he might have a shot before it's over. The rain falling down. A gain of six by Mays. It is second down and four for the Cougars at their own 40-yard line. In motion again, Marshall to the near side. Rippin. The handoff to Mays over the middle. And Ruben gets out to the Cougar 45-yard line. A gain of five, and it's going to be enough for the Cougar first down. Dan Wilkin on the stop of the Ducks, and Ruben Mays is just plowing his way, adding more and more yardage onto his Cougar record for most yards in a single ball game. So you're seeing Cougar history this afternoon and watching Ruben Mays. Why not run the clock out with Ruben? No one seems to be able to stop him right now. Not only that, he's getting the job done, moving your football team downfield, eating up time on the clock. Sam Burst wide to the near side in his first and 10 for the Cougars at their own 46. Motion is James. Ruben Mays again. He gets out across midfield, tackled by Bob Huditz. I look for the Cougars. They've been running Ruben a lot and had a lot of success. But I see the Oregon defense scooting up, knowing feeling that they're going to give the ball to Ruben. I look for them to throw a quick pass and try to make something happen on the pass sooner or later. Ruben Mays now with 338 yards rushing the football. Just over four minutes to go in the ball game. The rain still coming down. We had a lot of rain yesterday. Second down. And about five. over the middle, he 
rush his way out to the Duck 45-yard line. Picks up five more. Dale Dorning on the tackle. 35 carries, 348 yards. Ooh. And counting. And he doesn't even look tired. I think Ruben Mays will be the offensive player of the week of the Pac-10. I think he has a pretty good chance. Very good chance. <laughs> Real one to go in the ball game. Third and less than a yard to go for the Cougars. At the Duck 44-yard line. And it's Ruben Mays. He's got the first down and more. Ruben busts his way down to the... Oregon 41 yard line so he picks up four more yards before the stop by Bob Hewitts. Ruben Mays. Soaked jersey. You know he has to be cold. Comes out of the ball game. Takes a little breather on the Cougar sideline. Jamie Olsen in there. His tight end spot. 47-41. The Cougars lead by six with 2.34 left on the clock. I think they found a way to stop Ruben. They took his shoe off. <laughs> Lost his shoe earlier in the ball game. Had to come out for one play. Ripon, going to his left. He's the football, and he gets a first down for the Cougars to the duck. 28-yard line. Bob Hewitt's again on the tackle for Oregon. Another first down for Washington State. This is the Vier, and they take it to the back dive back, and the, the block, the pitch man sees he's not going to get the ball, so what does he do? He turns up and becomes a blocker. Mark Rippon hasn't really run all that much, but a few times he's kept the football, he's picked up some been good games. Exactly. A lot of the fans here in the stadium now starting to make their way for the exits with two minutes to go in the ball game and the Cougars lead 47 to 41 and the Cougars marching downfield leading time up on that clock and getting closer to a score. Ruben Mays, he is hit right at the line of scrimmage. Mays, stopped by Tony Grossi for no Grossi, Tony Grossi. Uh, tackle and timeout on the field with 1.44 to go in the fourth quarter. Cougars lead 47 to 41. Some of the fans making their way to the exits to get a quick start out of here. But anything can happen. Anything can happen. I know that slogan very well. I've heard that a number of times. 47 to 41, the Cougars lead the Oregon Ducks, but right now, Washington State in control, barring a major turnover right here, but the Cougars have played very, very well in that department today. Offensively, at least, they have. Mark Griffin talking things over with head coach Jim Walden and head coach Rich Brooks. His ball club put up some points, but the Cougars have put up six more. Rick Chase into the ball game for the Cougars. Second down and ten for the Cougars. And the Oregon 28. No gain on that last carry by Ruben Mays. But a few times, maybe the only time that Mays has been held to zero yards on a carry. Uh, an average of about ten yards a pop. Motion is marshaled to the near side, and the handoff goes to Dickie Walsh into the ball game as a replacement, or is it Calvin? I thought it was Dickie Walsh. Third down play coming up. It's Richard Calvin, and that's Walsh. Third down and eight. Cougars trying to pick up a few more yards right here and try to set up another field goal try by John Trout. Ball is right in the middle of the field at the 26-yard line. Motion, Michael James. And off to Ruben Mays. And Mays dives for about three or four more yards down into that 22-yard line tackled there by Todd Welch. 59 seconds on the clock. And timeout is called by the Oregon Ducks. And the Cougars, Paul Johns, are marching toward their second Pac-10 win of the year. 
Second consecutive victory. They won that super game last week, 49-42, on the verge of winning this one against the Ducks. And that very impressive win also. And if I remember, they scored 49 points. 49 points last week, 47 this week, so the offensive production has been very good. I'm sure Coach Walden is very pleased with that. They had 24 points in a close 27-24 loss at UCLA a couple of weeks ago, and then 27 points in a 29-27 loss against USC. So John Trout will come on to try for the field goal. The time, only 59 seconds to score. The Cougars 47, the Ducks 41. Time is running out on the Oregon Ducks. Trout had a 41-yard field goal that made it 47-34, but then the two-yard touchdown run, fourth down, two-yard touchdown run by Tony Cherry, and the two-point conversion made it 47-41. This is a critical field goal for Washington State. Excuse they're me, only, the extra point kick. Huh? They're, only, they're only behind, Hart is only behind by six points, but this is critical. The field goal attempt ball spotted at the 29-yard line, and it is good, a 39-yard field goal by John Trout, and with 56 seconds to go, it's now the Cougars 50, and the Ducks 41, and that just puts the icing on the kick. Handshakes on the Cougars' sideline, and this ball game is history. 15 to 41, a nine-point lead for Washington State. And it's gonna be a happy plane ride back home for the Cougars, back to Pullman, Washington. As John Trout with his third field goal of the day. Trout with field goals of 26, 41, and now 39 yards. Ruben Mays has 37 carries for 356 yards and three touchdowns for the day. And Ruben Mays with a Pac-10 rushing record this afternoon, 353 yards as you take a look at the time left in the ball game. Pac-10 rushing record breaking Ricky Bell's record against Washington State back in 1976. How about that? What a day for Ruben Mays. I guess Washington State had a record set on them, so why not break the record with your own runner? <laughs> the deep end, Newman and Sherry for the Ducks. Now the fans are really piling out of Watson Stadium. The Cougars will go to 2-2 two and two in the back 10 Back-to-back victories against Stanford. And now the Oregon Bunch as the ball just squibbles away all the way out to Cherry at the seven yard line. Up field at 15, trying to spin away, but it's taken down at the duck 16 yard line. 50 seconds to go. Cedric Brown on the tackle. Well, next week the Cougars will be back home after playing the last three games on the road. Back home to take on the Beavers against Oregon State and follow all the play-by-play -play right here on the Super Channel. One week from today, on first down, Miller back to throw. Down by nine, looking across the middle, and it's almost intercepted by Rico Tipton. Pass intended for Lou Barnes over the middle, but he was covered. And it's second down and ten. Play uses up only five seconds, 45 seconds to go. I'm sure Ruben Mays will receive a nice uh, welcome when he gets back home. It's a ticket tape parade would be in order. <laughs> to Pullman. Man, has he been amazing. Ruben Mays, 353 yards. Second down and 10 for Miller. And the Ducks. Everybody's in the defensive secondary. The pass is off incomplete intended for... Holman. Did he get it? I believe they called it. The nice catch by Scott Holman. And it's a first down for the Ducks at their own 29 yard line. And you have to admire head coach Rich Brooks. Oregon Ducks still battling. 35 seconds to go. Down by 9, 50 to 41. Yeah, these guys a lot of credit. Pass over the middle, and it's incomplete. Never turned around Mike McCarty. And he was open down at the Cougar 45 yard line. He never turns around. I guess he's figuring he's gonna, the quarterback is going to wait. Miller's going to wait till he goes deeper down the field. So in a situation like that, as soon as you see yourself open, you have to turn around to the quarterback. I think the ball was tipped. 
Still, McCarty had his back to the play. Back to the ball. Never saw it. Chris Miller, the quarterback, second down and 10. At the Oregon 29 yard line, 29 seconds to go. Cougars will even up the record on the year at 4 and 4. Likewise, the Ducks, they'll go to 4 and 4. Pass over the middle, and that's incomplete. Low. And intended for Holman again. Incomplete at the Duck 44 yard line. That stops the clock. Rick Riz along with Paul Johns. And Paul, what is the one thing that, besides Reuben Mays, the one thing that stands out offensively or defensively for the Cougars today? Well, I don't know if it was offensively or defensively, but special teams, as far as their punt return, they didn't punt, punting, they didn't have any block. They had a fairly good special teams play. Their kickoff coverage needs to be worked on a little bit more. Down field and deep. He's got more vines to Cougar 40. And out of bounds at the Washington State 31-yard line, but only 16 seconds on the clock. Good pass by Miller to Lou Barnes. Ricky Reynolds again on the tackle. Lou Barnes, five catches for 80 yards last week in that 17-10 loss against number one ranked Washington. That was a 39-yard pass play. First and 10 for the Ducks all the way down to the Washington State 31. 16 seconds to go. Cougars leading 50 to 41. Miller, deep. And it's almost intercepted by Cedric Brown. The pass intended for McCarty over the middle, but Cedric Brown had a better shot of the football. Second down and 10. Good job by Cedric Brown. Good hustle. Miller's trying to throw the ball into a zone. Had the receiver split the zone, and it's almost picked off. And then again, it's almost made a completion. But the ball bounced off the turf like that ball just took off. It just took off. By no, the nose was up. Uh-huh. Cougar fan here at the stadium this afternoon. Second down and ten. Tiger strong. Miller rolling to his right. Pass over the middle incomplete, but it looked like somebody jumped offside for Washington State. Pass and ten and Cherry in the middle. That wasn't quite there. Seven seconds to go in the ball game. Great job by the Cougars this afternoon. Great battle by both these ball clubs. 50 to 41, the Cougars lead. At halftime, they led 30 to 20. What a game. And what a day for Ruben Ray setting a Pac-10 rushing record, 353 yards, and also with it, a Washington State rushing record for a single game mark. Unbelievable. He had three touchdowns. John Trout had three field goals. Cougars went right after Oregon in this ballgame. They took an early 14-0 lead. All the coaches very pleased. This will probably be the last play of the game. Seven seconds. Wide to the right is Lou Barnes. Chris Miller. Deep. The Barnes well covered and it's knocked away in the end zone and two seconds on the clock. Joe Waters is there defending on the play. Two seconds to go in the ball game. Turn down, 26. Turn down. Coming up for the Ducks. Great job by quarterback Mark Rippon. There's John Trout who had the three field goals today. Rippon, good job running the football as well as throwing it. And a big run in the early in the fourth quarter. And this will be the final play of the game. Two seconds to go. Cougars leading 50 to 41. Miller dropping back to throw. Rushing. Keeps himself to 20 to 15. Time runs out. Miller to the 10-yard line. Knocked out of arms. And the ball game is over. The Cougars win it. The final score of 50 to 41. What a ball game by both these ball clubs. And the Cougars now 2-2 two and two in Pac-10 play. And the Ducks go to 2-3. and three. Final score. The Cougars 50 and the Oregon Ducks 41. We'll be back with a final recap right after these messages.